Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following episode. My name is Colton Brown. And joining me is Andrew Meadows. Hey, man, we're here. And I like the, the, change, to the, the change to the bit. Uh, we yeah, do it, we know, do it when I, we can. <laughs> <laughs> I think I tried it out on, on at least one of the several past episodes, and uh, it's a permanent change at this point. It's just, it's just embedded into the episode script uh, for now and always. The following episode, we do it when we get around to it. Um, but uh, yeah, how you been, man? I've been good. Uh, got to see you. Got to see Anna yeah. in the flesh. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, Big deal. Uh, yeah, we got to catch a movie, which is cool. And uh, we got to do some other things, which was cool. It was a chaotic weekend, uh, to say the least, I think. I, I, I felt like it was a chaotic weekend. <laughs> um, a lot going on. A lot going on. Yeah, but uh, we did it, and it was fun, and it was good to see you and Anna. And uh, it, I feel... I feel kind of sad we didn't record this in person. Yeah, I think it's the it's the second straight. Uh, I'm down in Florida hanging out at Andrews. We're going to record something in person, and then the the attempt gets foiled for one reason. Last time it was the XLR cable going missing. Uh, that, That's that true. was the culprit. This time it was just time and chaos. I think ultimately that uh, uh, made it a bit of a, a casualty, but uh, it's okay. Uh, we're talking the Suicide Squad. Uh, it's a film that, you know, as you said, we, we watched it together. We watched it together in person, so we all always have that shared first viewing experience. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna share this recording experience just just remotely. You know, we're just doing we're doing the huge. Uh, yeah. You know, it's more fun to do it in person because it's uh, it, God, it's been so long since we've done it at this point because of uh, you know COVID and whatnot. But uh, we'll make it happen at some point with some future movie. I you know I don't know what it's gonna be. It'll happen at some. point. It will but, happen. Um, it will happen at some point, and it'll, it'll it'll be fun. But it's okay, it's okay. We're here to talk about the Suicide Squad, and I'm excited to talk about it because, uh, you know, I've I've had I've had thoughts on it for a while. I mean, I was down in Florida uh, for about a week, and uh, it's been it's been I think like a close close to a week or so since then, since I got back, uh, and it's been got I, pro- probably three plus weeks since we've actually just straight up recorded anything. Yeah, it's um, been a while, it feels like. We we did we, yeah, it's been a while. We did uh Black Widow, Loki back to back uh with Enrique, which was very fun. Uh, and hopefully the listeners were uh able to enjoy those episodes. Um as 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 you could probably tell, uh the time when they were recorded versus the time when they were released uh was was quite a gap. <laughs> uh, same thing with the F9 episode as well. Uh just just built up an immense backlog before I took the bar because I didn't have time for editing, but I could always take a couple hour breaks uh, to, to, to hang out with some friends and record. Um, but we're hoping to mostly get back on track because I'm done with that damn thing. I'm done with the bar exam. It's in the rear view mirror. Uh, and uh, I gotta say, it feels great. I don't, I don't feel great about it. Uh, is, is, you know, don't, don't, don't misquote me, but it feels <laughs> great to be done with that uh, thing because August has been... August has been good. Uh, I'll talk about it more and catching up of what I've been up to specifically in August, but um, uh, July, end of July particularly, not so much fun, but August, A-OK. So, um, yeah, um, I think... I think, you know, all in all, I think we can hopefully get the podcast more or less back on track. Um, you know, I don't know if we'll necessarily ever really be back to uh, doing it again the following week. That may be a tall task. And and uh, and especially with the, the Delta variant running rampant with COVID, we were, I think Venom 2 got delayed. I know, really sad story. Um, so sad that I didn't bother <laughs> to put it in the news. I'm just throwing it in as an aside here. But, you know, release dates may end up shifting around and things may kind of get a little crazy potentially. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to basically pick episodes, you know, pick, pick projects that we want to focus on and record when we can and get at the episodes out when we can. Uh, and, uh, we'll do it again the following episode. That's, that's kind of the conceit at this point. But, um, you know, we're not doing Jungle Cruise this time. Uh, we'll talk probably the Green Knight, maybe next episode. I think that's one that we will probably both have a lot to say on. Uh, yeah. If, if, if I may make such a bold claim, uh, but we're talking the Suicide Squad because, it is the one that we wanted to do uh, in person. Just like I said, couldn't find the time for. Um, so a little late to the game, but we've carved out a little bit of time. Uh, actually, while I'm up in Vermont now, I'm 
uh, <laughs> I described it to Andrew as recording in, in a closet. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not far off the mark is what I'll say. It's a, it's a small ish bedroom with a twin twin bed behind me. Um, but, uh, the, the air situation is not great. It's a, it's a humid day. Um, there's not a lot humid of day coming into the room. <laughs> It's it's you kiss my right. ass, humid day, <laughs> humid day. You got fucking... air conditioning. There's no air conditioning. There's a key difference. You're you're sitting in air conditioning, so you're, humid you know, day. you're miserable a... when you're outside. You're miserable when you're outside, but when you're inside, everything's everything's good. Here, it's it's actually kind of the opposite. It's, it feels okay outside, like it's humid outside, but it feels fine. But then it gets kind of trapped inside because there's no air conditioning and there's no like airflow right now, kind of pushing it around. But anyway, I'm gonna be sweating bullets by the end of this thing. But I'm but I'm armed with a beer and I'm armed with uh, a desire to talk about the Suicide Squad. So it's gonna be just fine, is what I'm saying. Armed with a beer um, and, right. a, and a and a cool in a cooler thing, like a. Uh, this was this was my birthday present. Nice. Um, from from my parents. Uh, yeah, they got me a set of Yeti. Uh, can coolers i think they think they have some sort of uh portmanteau for a name but i forget what it is so yeah this is a 16 ounce can cooler and i gotta say it, it really it does work cold it's great it, it they, they they work like a charm so it's pretty great so i'm drinking the best uh rated ipa on beer advocate it is the alchemist heady topper which nice. is a staple anytime i come to vermont i always get it um and it's delicious. I must say, it is delicious. So it's going to keep me company. It's going to keep me nice and toasty and hydrated. Uh, the, 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 it'll keep me hydrated. The heat will probably help with the toasty part, I think. But I'm excited. I'm excited to sit down and, and record an episode with you. It's uh, like I said, it's been a long time coming, especially to talk about the Suicide Squad. So um, I think I can offer a fun fact on the Suicide Squad if you'd like. Yes, I think I, think, I have no know, fun fact. Get a little something. Okay, so. I guess you could say this is a very, very mild spoiler. I'll, I'll try to keep it as kind of nondescript as possible. Um, but uh, people may know that uh, one Harley Quinn makes a return appearance in this film uh, as portrayed by Margot Robbie. Uh, she uh, she was in that, that other Suicide Squad film, which hopefully we'll not talk about too, too much on this episode, although maybe it'll be a good comparison point uh, when it comes to talking about uh, the Suicide Squad. Obviously, a big difference there. You put a the in front of the film, it changes it entirely. Um, but she was she, you know, she had the, the Birds of Prey film, which was basically a Harley film, uh, and then she's back for this one. Uh, and uh, there's a particular scene uh, in, this, in this film, and I apologize if any, anyone can hear any dogs barking in the background. It's just, the, the perils of being in a closet is uh, I'm hanging out with some other people and uh, there's, a, there's a dog, a muck, running a muck, but that's okay. She's great. We love her. Um, uh, there's a scene in this film where Harley Quinn uh, is, uh, she finds herself in handcuffs and uh, she has to get herself out of the handcuffs. I won't tell you when, I won't tell you why, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, she uses her feet to accomplish the feat of, uh, feet to accomplish the feet good lord <laughs> of uh getting out of the handcuffs and the fun fact is that margot robbie did that whole thing herself she fully used her feet to unlock handcuffs uh with with the key and everything uh which is a wow a certain level of dexterity and feet that i don't particularly understand there's people that can like write with their feet and stuff too and i'm like i don't really get it it's kind of oh, cool. My it toes also move weirds up me and out down. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's that's kind of the, I can curl them a little bit. You know, that's fine. Um, but uh, but James Gunn actually, who, who's the director of this film, writer and director of this film, commented on it and said that uh, he was disappointed that because of what Harley was wearing, her face is actually kind of concealed in that particular shot, and so you can't tell it looks like a stunt double. But he says it's one hundred percent Margot Robbie uh, pulling off the unlocking the handcuffs with feet trick, um, the classic handcuffs with feet trick. So anyway, I thought that was pretty spectacular. It was one of those things that I read it after the fact. I was just like, what? Holy shit. Really? Like that's, I think I have been caught actually pretty insane during that, during that sequence. I think I remember that. Cause it was, yeah, pretty wild. <laughs> pretty wild. It was pretty, it wild. was pretty wild. I'm uh, sorry. I, I spilled beer on my, my, uh, my, well, no. my mouse pad. Not the first well, time something's been it's, it's, on it, it's, it's absorbent, right? You know, uh, it's used to that sort of treatment. <laughs> needs to go in the fucking wash. This fucking mouse pad uh. is so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry. I digress. Uh, hey, you know, 180 episodes. That's that's a lot of beer. Uh, that's been five years. Wine that's been consumed. 
I don't know if you know this or not. I was just, I went to the website to see what actually, like when you were talking about, you know, the release and whatnot. I went to mm-hmm. the website to see what actually we had, we had pushed to the website. We've been doing this shit since 2017. Yeah. So four years. Four, four years. years. I, yeah, I, I, math's my, you know, I do and, find And actually, that's... to be honest, I mean, uh, probably just over four years, because I, I think we kicked off in August of 17, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, we're pretty much celebrating four years. Uh, who, who, who would have thought that we'd keep it going? Uh, four Man, years later. what a deal. Um, you know, yeah, fun with it, right? It, no, it's, it's definitely fun. It keeps us, uh, keeps us together. It's a, it's definitely a, uh, it's a good thing. It's an awesome thing. I can't, yeah. I can't tell you or the listeners how much I appreciate this thing that we do. It keeps us, yeah. uh, it keeps me anyways. I could speak for myself. It keeps me stapled to the things that I, uh, you know, oftentimes when you get involved in, in, in all the things you got going on, it's easy to, uh, to slide astray from the things that you 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 and you regularly enjoy or you try to enjoy, and it's easy to get pulled away from those things. Video games is a good thing. I don't play I don't play a lot of video games anymore, and I love video games, but I don't get to play them anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, this podcast brings me um, is a reason. It's a reason to come and and do the thing that I enjoy, and it's yeah, uh, it's an excuse to do the thing you love. Like oh god, I have to watch this movie. Well, I guess I'll just have <laughs> to find I'm the go- time for I it. I have you to know, go to the, the listeners theaters. depend on it. That's it. They, the listeners uh, depend on on me doing this thing. So, yeah, it's uh, uh, it can't let them down. No, exactly. It's it's a it's a it's a really good thing for Headspace. It's a really good thing for a lot of different reasons. It's a lot of good thing for uh, a lot of good things for maintaining our friendship and stuff. And uh, it's it's a it's a it's a beautiful project. And it's it's uh, there's no reason there's no there's no um, it's the words I'm looking for. There's, uh, it's easy to know why I enjoy doing it. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's, I don't know. I love it. I love it. It's fun. It's just fun. It's just fun catching That's up. That's it. Even and, when you know, you're in a fucking closet. That's cool too. <laughs> even when you're in your closet and I'm going to be like pooled in sweat, you know, before long, but it's going to be fine. You know, it's, it's all in the name of fun and, uh, it is fun. It, 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 it is legitimately. So, um, yeah, except when I fall asleep. Episodes. Not bad. sometimes Not I fall bad. asleep. Except, well, you know, you know, sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, just the the week catches up with you, and you know, it's 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 after midnight. You know, what what are you gonna do, right? <laughs> uh, but it's all in it's, fun. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> you're having fun until that point, and then you're feeling great when you're asleep, and you're having a great time. That's it. God, God I had such a good time. I'm great. ready to go sleep. I just go to sleep. <laughs> Blah, right on the microphone. Anyways. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways, let's let's do some news, shall we? Uh, we have four pieces of news and then four trailers. Uh, there's a lot of news that obviously has come out in the past month ish, and we'll we'll work our way through it uh, over the next uh, the course of the next several episodes that we end up recording. Um, but yeah, I figured eight's a good number to to, to come back with uh, from our slight recording hiatus. Uh, and we'll start in uh, the world of Marvel Studios, which we will return to actually shortly. Um, but uh, Blade, you you may recall that Mahershala Ali uh, a couple years back was cast to play Blade for Marvel Studios. We really haven't heard anything about it. Basically, they, they announced it. Um, I think it was the result of Mahershala calling up Kevin Feige and company and saying... I want to do something. And he's like, okay, what do you want to do? I want to do blade. He's like, okay, I guess we're making a blade movie then. aren't we? <laughs> um, which, you know, Mahersh Lali calls you on the phone and says, I want to do something. You say, yeah, okay, we'll do that. Um, but anyway, they're, they're moving forward on it. I don't think it'll be necessary. Maybe it's a phase five thing. I don't know if it'll be a late phase four MCU project or whatever, but uh, things are moving forward. I think they have a script written and, uh, and now we have a director uh, and talks to, to handle the blade film. It's uh Bassam Tariq, uh, probably not a name that you would recognize, honestly, not a name that I recognized, but, uh, I think Marvel's kind of, uh, MO these days, uh, seems to be going for lesser known actors that have kind of done ND projects or something like that. Uh, or, you know, award darlings as is the case with Chloe Zhao, uh, now doing Eternals and such, you know, getting these kind of, uh, directors you wouldn't really expect and just, you know, being like, you made, you made a good movie. We'll, we'll, we'll support you. We'll, we'll help you through the process and, and bring us something great, you know, you know, make something great for us. So he, uh, did a film called Mogul Mowgli, uh, which I think is expected to get a release of some sort this year. Uh, it stars Riz Ahmed. 
Uh, it's apparently very good. I think it's gotten great reviews. Um, but uh, he's 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 going to be coming in, playing. Uh, well, not playing. He's going to be directing the 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 Blade film. So uh, I imagine you probably don't have a ton of comments on the director himself, but maybe you have some comments on uh, on a Blade film and and such. So I'll, I'll, I'll let you. Yeah, no, Blade, Blade sounds great. I would be all over Blade. I'd be all over um, Mahasha Ali playing Blade. That's cool shit. Uh, I don't know anything about the director. Uh, I do have the trailer playing on mute for uh, Mogul Mowgli, mm-hmm. uh, okay. and um, I I can't gather a lot from it specifically, w- <laughs> or specifically with it on mute. Uh, it, <laughs> Probably it, helps uh, to to be able to hear it. I would imagine. Yes, uh, but uh, to quote the Guardian, it is a oh, let me rewind it. Fierce, unrelenting. Filmmaking from the Guardian. That's their quote. Mm, so, okay. uh, yeah. and 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 to quote Andrew from a future episode, it's a quote unquote tour de force. Film, <laughs> it might be uh, a as well. tour de force film. It could be, uh, but with the trailer on mute, I can't. I can't tell you that that his movie is. But anyways, I am excited with anything with Marhasha Mar Mar. Mar God damn it, Marhasha <laughs> Ali playing Blade. <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 signed minus the the pronunciation <laughs> things but i had my woes uh, uh i think and that was i think i was recording the f9 episode most recently and i, and I butchered the lord of the rings anime film uh pronunciation <laughs> so so you know i can laugh at you but sometimes 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 i'm, I'm the butt of the joke too so uh um, and uh yeah. to be fair Maybe I can put it on eyeglasses. I do have an eyeglasses prescription. It's coming in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, maybe... A little corrective vision. Maybe the reason why I can't read anybody's fucking name is because... Can't see it very I well. can't see it very well. <laughs> this, is, this is an M and then an H. And, uh, I just don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blind. <laughs> uh, Ali? Yeah, Ali. We got Ali. Mr. Ali. <laughs> that's easy three letters uh pretty easy to to figure out so yeah uh so Tariq will be the sixth person of color to direct a movie uh, over at marvel studios uh joining the ranks of ryan coogler chloe Zhao, destin cretton who's doing the upcoming shang chi taika Waititi, and nia da costa um so you know great you know obviously a concerted uh diversity push from marvel studios and getting uh unique and different kind of voices i think behind the camera is is is, is uh is really important um, so I think I'm, I mean, I'm really excited to see what they do with the blade film. Obviously we had three blade films once upon a time with, uh, with, with, uh, with Wesley Snipes. I imagine this will be a very different, uh, complexion, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm excited. I am excited. I, I, I'm very curious, you know, vampires, it's a, you know, it's, it's just such a different corner of the MCU than we've seen before. And I'm excited for them to push into weird and different corners. So it's cool. So yeah, that's that's uh, uh, yeah, I agree. It's cool. Whose movie is that? So, yeah. Do you think it's a uh is that is that a totally 100% blade centric movie? Or do they bring in like other like does that exist uh, in like the Doctor I mean, Strange there's, there's, kind of uh, realm of things or is that like what's the w- because so far they haven't had a I know this is I'm 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 diverting us into the weeds. But okay. So far, we haven't had an MCU movie that didn't serve up a larger purpose, like didn't intertwine into the into the end of each particular phase or what have you, right? Like each one of them served a very significant purpose in their lead role or their lead character or whatever. Uh, the main antagonist served some sort of higher thing, right? So, like, what's Blade a part of, or? How does it slot into a um? What's the guy from Loki? Um, not Kronos. I, th- I wanted to say Kronos. It's not Kronos. What the fuck's his name? Kang. Kang. Right. Like, how would Blade yeah. slot into a Kang the Conqueror kind of situation, or what other yeah, kind of situation know. does he slot into? I, yeah, I feel like Kang feels more like main Avengers kind of kind of territory. I feel like to me, Blade is definitely more Doctor Strange ish territory. You know, magic, the occult, um, witchcraft, wizardry, that sort of thing. Vampires, I guess. You know, throw them all in the in the same same boat. But he's got uh, his so own. That, that's what hold I would like to see. He's got his whole hold devoted movie. 
Right. And Blade's and so, not yeah, like an right, Avenger. You know, so, right? Right. And so if you're going to do it in service of some other thing, I feel like the direction that Marvel's probably going to push in, maybe out of necessity, is like, what are other teams that get formed that aren't the Avengers? So like Blade's kind of traditionally part of the Midnight Suns uh, alongside like Doctor Strange, I think Ghost Rider. And, um, okay. You like know, more kinda, occult uh, kind of shit. Where yeah, they fight, you know, you they know. fight. Yeah, that's cool. I take it. Yeah, something like that. I think would be cool. Um, you know, so could carve out a new kind of you know corner of the universe, but obviously not too relegated to the corner that they're not interacting with everyone else. But you know, I, I maybe maybe a blade still pops up in an Avengers film, but right, he's not traditionally an Avenger or anything like that. So right, it'd be, you know, but you know, if you have young Avengers in one 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 corner. Uh, you've got Midnight Suns in another corner. I don't know. Maybe you. you uh, know, what's have, the? Uh, uh, they a, have a the new Avengers. I don't know. You know, there's there's different things that you can kind of. They have the Dark Justice League, cool. right? That fights occult shit in DC mm-hmm. comics. Exactly, something like that. You know, that'd uh, be totally that'd be totally like cool. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's that's what I would like to see. Is I would you know, very much like to see that. Do, stuff. do something that's 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 a little grungier. You know what I mean? Like Blade's like a, is it? You know, he's 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 different than than your your Iron Mans and Captain Americas. Like you know, it's a darker corner of the universe. Embrace that. Right? You know. Uh, you know. Do something exciting and cool with that. That's 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 what I want to see. So, you know, I, it, maybe Blade, like I said, wasn't necessarily in the cards until Mahershala calls him up and says, "Let's do it." And it's just like, okay, well then let's 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 let's, let's find do something slot. with that. Let's let's, let's you know maybe fit. start there, but then build from there. You know, so and and maybe we'll see shades of something. You know, some some kind of out there craziness and in in in, uh, in the multiverse of madness next year with with the you know the next Doctor Strange film. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's cool. I think it's exciting you know, to see new and different things from Marvel. And um, seems to be, you know, uh, obviously we'll be getting lots of returning characters, but, you know, even 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 this year, the Eternals are kind of new and different and a little bit more out there than anything we've probably seen from them before. Shang-Chi, uh, more eminently, is obviously also still kind of new and different too. So, yeah. A lot of new cool and different, stuff. New and different's great. Yeah, exactly. All cool stuff. Um, so switching gears over to the DC Universe, uh, uh, while it's on our minds, uh, we've got some news, uh, some casting news uh, regarding the Batgirl film that uh, has been in the works for a while. Once upon a time, Joss Whedon was attached. He is no longer attached, uh, which is which is just fine, which is just fine. Uh, it is now being penned. Uh, the, the movie is being penned by the same writer that did the Birds of Prey film. Uh, oh, great. And, That's uh, excellent. It, Hey, you know, it's fine. Uh, and it's going to be directed by uh, Adil El Arbi and Bilal Falah, who were the directors on Bad Boys for Life, uh, one of the top grossing Excellent. films of 2020, Bad Boys for Life. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, Batgirls is getting a film. It's coming exclusively to HBO Max, uh, which is which is a little odd. Uh, but we know who is going to be playing Barbara Gordon, uh, AKA uh, Batgirl, and it is going to be Leslie Grace uh, of In the Heights. Uh, she was, um, she was the she was the love interest for the not main character um, for for, for uh, the other characters. Gotcha. She was she was she was she was, she was, the, she was the one that went to Stanford. Okay, Iraq, yeah, I, the I, one that had that had real heart wrenching song about people not accepting you and shit. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. That is her. That's Leslie Grace, and she's going to be Batgirl. Um, I was really struggling within the heights, which is sad because I, I really did like that film. But my brain, uh, maybe it's maybe the heat's already getting to me. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but yeah, she's going to be Batgirl. So what do you think about that? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, we're talking a DC film on this episode. We had to get a requisite uh, piece of DC news in here somewhere, and so this this certainly fit the bill. Um, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I think it's that, I think it's cool. You know. It could be totally cool. I mean, DC, DC does have good shit. Uh, DC has good shit, and and we'll talk about this. DC has good shit when they just let filmmakers do their thing and not feel like they need to micromanage or change everything in post production or or what have you. You know, obviously Marvel has a very different approach. It's it's a kind of curated. Um, you know, we'll make it good as we're making the project, you know, and then everything will kind of click at some point. Um, DC is just kind of like, you know, oh, we didn't like how this turned out panic mode. Let's destroy this film in post-production or, um, yeah, this is a really crappy script. Let's just green light that. Uh, or, you know, 
sometimes, you know, as they've kind of discovered recently, because I think they've been floundering around, it's just like, yeah, just here's a few million bucks. Just do whatever, man. Like, it's fine. Um, you know, and then when they get it, they don't turn around and be like, we did what with this? They're just like, okay, okay this is weird and out there, but uh, we'll just put it out to the masses and see what they think, you know? So I think that DC, you know, it can, has the potential. They have a lot of great characters, I think, in, in their wheelhouse, certainly. And and I, and I do think Batgirl's one of them. Um, I think I think Batgirl's a really fun character and, and one who hasn't really been represented in film uh, very well, uh, or really mostly at all, just really kind of the animated projects. So I like Leslie Grace. I liked her in, in the Heights. I thought she was good there. Um, I think that a Batgirl film could work. It, it, again, coming to HBO Max exclusively, I don't know if that means like a lower budget or exactly how that works. That feels weird to me. It feels like skipping a theatrical release entirely is kind of a, I don't know, questionable move maybe, but maybe that'll change. I really don't know. But, uh, you know, anyway, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with this. Um, 2022. It's when it's expected to, deb- to debut. So uh, I don't know if you have any other thoughts on it, but we can uh, we can we can move on if you do not. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of thoughts on it, but don't know a lot about Batgirl. I know the CW uh, has has making it Batwoman, Bat- Batwoman, which oh. is different. It's a different character. So this is Batgirl. This is the son of Jim Gordon, Commissioner Gordon. I thought she was in so, a wheelchair. I'm sorry the the daughter, not the son, <laughs> the daughter of Commissioner Gordon. Um, uh, she and in times has been in a wheelchair. There was the the, the famous Alan Moore killing joke storyline where um, the Joker crippled Barbara Gordon, um, and uh, she became Oracle for a time. But she was she was traditionally Batgirl, you know, a crime fighter alongside Batman, part of the Bat family. And then uh, for a time, you know, when she when she she lost the use of her legs, she kind of became like the more behind the scenes. Uh, I'll help out Batman behind the scenes. Uh, as Oracle, but yeah, no, I mean, she's, she's, she's been out on the front lines too. Um, and you know, and certainly like DC reboots their stuff every, so, you know, every, every few years. So I think in a lot of the reboots, she's just been straight Batgirl kind of through, through all of that. So, but yes, again, distinct from Batwoman who is, uh, who's Bruce Wayne's cousin. Oh, okay. Uh, so, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever, man. We'll see what happens, dude. If it's good, I'll be all about it. You know, it's one of them things. I need a trailer. Let me get it hyped. Uh, yeah. you know, we'll see what happens. Sure. 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 Uh, all right. Well, that brings us to, uh, Marvel studios yet again. Uh, so, uh more casting news actually in terms of, 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 Marvel land. Uh, so black Panther of Wakanda forever, the sequel to black Panther, obviously sans one, uh, Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace. Uh, it's filming right now. Um, and, uh, you know, we still don't really have a great grasp on what this film's going to look like because obviously they're filling a huge, huge void with loss of their main character. Um, I don't know, but we do know, we do know that uh, Michaela Cole has joined the cast of uh, Wakanda Forever. And again, this is maybe not a piece of news that that strikes you as, uh, okay, great, I don't know who that is, but maybe she's good, maybe she's not, I don't know. Um, she, she basically, basically, I think she wrote, directed, starred in a series on HBO called I May Destroy You, uh, which got incredible reviews. I haven't seen it, um, but by all accounts, it's it's just a really, really good show. I think a very heavy show. I think it's uh, dealing with sexual assault and, and you know, responses to, to, to that. Uh, so I think it's, you know, not exactly a, a show that you walk into. It's not a comedy or anything like that, but, um, again, by all accounts, just, just, just really great. And she, she apparently, uh, was great in it, obviously had a very, you know, big hand in, in bringing it, uh, to light, but she's, she's now in black Panther. Uh, apparently Ryan Coogler saw that or, you know, maybe some other thing that she was in and said, yeah, let's 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 bring her in. You know, let's let's make her part of this cast. So it feels like a pretty good get uh, for Marvel Studios uh, all in all. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, it's kind of it's kind of what I got on that front. Uh, and again, again, I don't know if I'm you know leaving you with not a whole lot to add. But uh, you know. no, I saw she. Uh, so I did the old IMDb ch- trick. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, pulled sure, sure. her up and uh, apparently she was in a couple of episodes of Black Mirror and I distinctively mm, okay. remember her in each of the episodes she was in. Um, you do remember? I do remember. So, oh, okay. Nice. Okay. Um, well, well, there you go. That, that's good then. Yeah. I, I didn't know her by name, but I remember the roles that she's played. So, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm totally about it. I 
I have no reason not to be about it. Uh, the roles that she played in the the in in the roles that she played in previous stuff, uh, she did a very good job. Um, she's memorable, and uh, if <laughs> this is the way I bit, I feel about it. Just like if 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 Ryan Coogler says, "I want this person to play this role," okay, dude. If if yeah, he's he's at that level right if now. If Feige like, says, "I want this whatever, director just, to direct just, this movie." Whatever. Okay, dude. All right. I have faith in your hiring skills. You know, we're trying to hire people for the car lot again. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. You know what I mean? We've <laughs> gone through three people so far this year. This is the most frustrating process ever. Like, I don't know. You know? Uh, so when 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 Sarah's principal was hiring new teachers, like what questions is that lady asking? Like how does she know how to get the team that she has? Because evidently she's got a good team put together. What the fuck is she looking for? Because I don't know what the fuck to look for. You know. So Ryan Coogler and 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 Kevin Feige, they got something that fucking works. Evidently, you know what I mean. So, yeah. Until you give me yeah. reason to doubt your your hiring process, I have no reason to doubt it. Whatever you've got going works, and that actually, you know, with with all the praise that we give Marvel Studios and this and that, I would like uh, Kevin Feige to give me a little bit of fucking hiring advice so I can make my life a little bit easier and hiring good people. Yeah, come on, come on, Kev. Take 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 take. Just take take like a thirty minute. Little lunch break out of your busy schedule. That's it. Give, give us, us a, a call. Ring. Give us a shout. Hey Andrew, this is what let, you need to look Andrew for. Know. You can just give me like a like a ten minute spout of what to look for. Literally ten minutes of your day, dude. Hey, this is what you need to look for when you're doing an interview. Just do, ask this question, this question, this question. It'll get you good. Perfect. That's all I. That's all I need. You know, we're not getting your checks, so maybe a little advice to help our personal life. That'd be great too. Mm-hmm. Kevin, thanks. Dude, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, we're waiting, Kevin. Well, you know what we're also waiting for uh, from Kevin is for Kevin to deliver us a Hawkeye series over on Disney Plus. And Kevin says, I got you, fam. November 24th, you will be able to watch the Hawkeye series over at Disney Plus starring the one and only uh, greatest musician of our generation, <laughs> Jeremy Renner. Uh, and also perhaps less jokingly one of the better musicians perhaps of our generation Haley steinfeld uh joining the mcu as kate bishop aka uh clint barton hawkeye's uh protege um you know so uh so november 24th uh, you know that's 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 not too bad granted we have other marvel stuff uh in the interim to entertain us what if what if ponder the question well, what if is don't is, you even get me started boring. on that shit dude oh my god <laughs> don't you get me started on we'll that. definitely be having an episode on that no worries we'll definitely have an episode on that but that's going on shang chi's dropping in like two weeks basically uh eternals will be out before this so we got lots of marvel goodness to, to tide us over until until hawkeye drops on disney plus but i am excited about hawkeye nonetheless it's not to you know I'm excited for all of those other He things, doesn't appear to age a whole lot either, Mr. Renner. I'm looking at the picture from Entertainment. He's looked the same for a while, whatever. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude doesn't age a whole lot. Good for him. Yeah. Same old rat face Renner. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm excited for this uh, for a number of different reasons. Uh, I like Mr. Renner. Jer- Jeremy. I like Jeremy. Jeremy, as he's, he's sometimes known. That's correct. Um, I do like Haley Steinfeld. I think she'll be excellent. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, excited. I'm excited to see her. I, yeah, I, I like great. the I like the practical heroes. I do I do enjoy them. You know, yeah. don't get me wrong. There's something about super powered people that's very cool. But at the same time, I think you have a lot more. Um, you have a lot more compatib- <sighs> compatibility, or or just. I don't know. It's easy to identify with the normal, like the, the, the average Joe that is put in supernatural situations or incredible situations. Uh, and I think that's, uh, I think that's really compelling of, of, um, 
Hawkeye's character, maybe Haley Steinfeld's character. I don't know a lot about her. Um, it's what's cool about, you know, Black Widow, you know, just people that are put in, in just incredible situations that are normal people that that put in the training or or have, you know, just a number of different things that just make them incredible normal people. And I think that's really cool, uh, especially in, in the MCU. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I, I enjoy his character. I think it's cool. Uh, there's nothing like taking down an alien invasion with a fucking bow and arrow. That's, that's, you know, your badass win. You take down an alien invasion with a bow and arrow. That's cool. Um, yeah. So I'm all about it. We'll see what happens. And, and Kevin Feige has given me no reason to doubt anything he wants to do. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's just another in the long line of MCU probable successes, I guess we'll say at this point. But, uh, I think yeah. they're, I think they're, uh, three, four for four, four for four so far this year. We had what three Disney Plus shows that have aired in full, plus Black Widow. I think you're a little I, more ambivalent on Black Widow than myself, but not a not not a not a misfire. You wouldn't say, I don't think so. No, no. I mean, it was it was totally fine. I mean, I think that was my I think that was my takeaway from it. It's totally fine. Uh, they all can't be. If they were all just incredible, ridiculous move, I mean, you have to have some variance in there. I mean, some variance, oh, some variance. <laughs> but I will say on the on the note of Disney Plus, I'm about fucking tired. I am incredibly fatigued on weekly releases. When <laughs> something comes out on a streaming platform, I expect it to be dumped. I don't want weekly fucking episodes. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think certain things play well with the weekly format. Like I didn't mind WandaVision because of the conceit with the different uh you know uh sitcom decades that it was playing on. And I feel like even what if is kind of like, you know, each episode's kind of a different thing. So it's like No, right, I totally you know. want I want no, what I, if. I, uh, look, look, I get it. I get the sentiment. <laughs> I also I get the same sentiment. I think there's ones that I can rationalize and there's ones that I feel less good about rationalizing. It's all rationalization when it comes down to it. But yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. But, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Disney Plus, uh, at least with the Marvel stuff anyway, is in, in a rush to, to go to the yeah, Netflix the, the fucking, drop all at once model. The, the Star Wars stuff. Can always wait. Weekly. Can always wait. Yeah, yeah, you can always wait. No, you know, then, I can't then you're wait. You're just sitting there for to... two months, twiddling your thumbs, avoiding spoilers on the internet and then conversation. Where's the fuck? I can't do it. I can't do it. I need to watch everything all at once. It's what that's, I need. That's, that's the nice thing about the movies. You just, just, just plop your butt in there for, for two hours and you just, you just enjoy it. And you're like, I've seen it all. I've seen everything. Uh, I'm good. So. Yeah. Not getting it from the Disney Plus platform. But no, they have me, yeah. uh, they have me returning. If they dumped it all at once, I'd watch it, and I probably wouldn't return until they dump the next thing. So yeah, uh, yeah, they, they know how to get their hooks in. Yeah, that's 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 yeah, that's, that's bullshit. That's, that's fucking is, Disney. So. Kevin Feige, uh, Kevin, taking Kevin. advantage of me. Mm-hmm. Kevin. Anyways, anyways, November twenty fourth. Look forward to some Hawkeye. Uh, I know I will. Uh, all right, let's talk some trailers. Uh, we got four trailers to talk about. Uh, there's a big Favorite one. The part. There's, there's a big one at the end. We'll, we'll get there. Best for last. Best for last. But we start with the next film from uh, auteur Ridley Scott, um, which probably was a true statement at one point in his lifetime, but now that the man is approaching 90, uh, it's less true. But occasionally Ridley Scott can shit out something that's not so bad and looking at you, the Martian, and then occasionally Rid Scott, you know, Ridley Scott will also deliver us, uh, I'll do the fingering and, uh, and uh, Alien Covenant and the like. Uh, so the last duel is, uh, is the next film from Ridley Scott. It's got, it's got a pretty decent cast, I gotta say. Jo- uh, Jodie Comer, a- a Adam Driver, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck. Um, or Ridley Scott delivers Ben Affleck's fucking hair dye. Oh my god. So, I mean, before we really even have a conversation about this trailer, let's just talk first of all about the hairstyling in this film, because Ben Affleck and Matt Damon just look ridiculous in this film. Just ridiculous. <laughs> I can't get over it. I mean, Matt Damon's got this like <laughs> pseudo totally... mullet thing with the with like the the just the the chin beard, and then Ben Affleck's kind of got like a bowl like a Caesar bowl cut 
also with the chin thing, but also he's just fully blonde. It's all bad, man. <laughs> it just totally pulls me out of it. I'm sorry. I don't I just, know what it is. Honestly, I, I think I can I can gel with Jodie Comer. I can gel with Adam Driver and and probably even Matt Damon in kind of this medieval times. But I cannot take Ben. Ben Affleck, Affleck takes you totally seriously. out of it, right? He's just that. There's you just you cannot buy him <laughs> as some medieval king or whatever he's supposed to be on this. He's clearly some sort of like someone with authority and power. And it's just like you look ridiculous, my good sir. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I can't. Uh, you know the trailer. The trailer doesn't look all bad, but then I. <laughs> I agree, but it's like it's like it's like. Am I going to be able to watch two plus hours of this? And it's like honestly, I think I'm going to struggle with it. I think I will just because everyone looks so ridiculous, and it's just like I don't know if I don't know if the looks are period accurate. I'm sure that's what he's striving for, but like sometimes you know, it's a film. It's a film, man. That shit like, is bleach you, you blonde. That is fucking. That is fucking bleach. That is, there's nothing natural about that hair color. That shit is bleach. They bleached. They bleached his hair. Poor guy. I don't. I. Yeah. The trailer doesn't look bad. It looks like a compel. It might be a compelling story. It might be okay. But god damn it, every time I see his bleach blonde hair, I <laughs> and his, uh, I just I get, I get pulled. I get pulled out of it hard. I get hard pulled out of it. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I the hair and makeup and 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 that direction of this film might be. Uh, there's not many times where hair and makeup pulls you totally out just, of just completely like, out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not many times that, that that is like the detriment to your film. But this might be the detriment to this film if I can't if I can't identify with that character because his cause his hair is so ridiculous. I I don't know. We'll see what happens, I guess. But as of right now, from the trailer, looks like a compelling story with terrible terrible hair and makeup <laughs> but we'll see yeah, what happens i think that's probably a pretty accurate summary it uh like you're right you know it doesn't look bad um could be pretty compelling could be pretty interesting but like i said it's going to be tough to sit through two plus hours of it just like trying to take these people seriously and it's like i don't know it reminds me uh uh there's a uh, the, the the philadelphia museum of art, of art there's like these uh portraits of like these monks that have uh, the haircuts where it's a it's a circle around their head, but they're like totally bald in the middle, and it's like yeah. fully on their head, and they have like these machetes like wedged in their skulls, and I'm just like, what is even happening? What are people doing back in the day? And so maybe again, it's accurate to that just like absolute ridiculousness that apparently went on in in the past, but um, <laughs> it's gonna be hard to take it seriously. Look I look at those portraits it's like this is a great work of art that was made hundreds of years ago. But why in the world was this happening, and why was this the subject of it? So you know, I'm gonna just, I just you know, pull up whatever, a man. Of it. Ridley Scott, man. Ridley, all you need to know is Ridley Scott, and uh, so. And it was a very modern looking trailer for the period piece of movie that it was, with like the uh, yeah, the blocks yeah, the, and stuff. The blocks that was kind of interesting. Hopefully they don't do that like in the it, actual film. I think that will be distracting as well. Yeah, no, it'd be very distracting. Uh, it's just like a weird take on like a period piece kind of film. Mm. Kind of reminds me of, uh, you know what it most reminds me of? Is you remember in Tropic Thunder where, <laughs> where, where, where Lazarus plays the, the guy with Tobey Maguire? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Satan's Alley. <laughs> Satan's Alley. It reminds me of Satan's Alley. Because he had the, didn't have the didn't have the blonde hair. Wasn't was <laughs> he had the blonde hair with the yeah, super the blue, blue eyes. The blue contacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he touches his fucking rosary beads and he, he gets on. <laughs> oh. oh shit! That's what this reminds me of. It. <laughs> I g- <laughs> <laughs> does honestly you're I really not wrong i have it i have it on mute i have it on mute right now and now just, that i've said that that's all i can see is just like a long drawn out satan's alley fucking trailer uh, holy shit you need <laughs> oh man 
<laughs> That's exactly it. You're exactly right. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, you need to re- you, everybody needs to watch the Satan Alley trailer and then watch the last duel trailer and then and then see just watch it on mute though. You have to watch it on mute. <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't be beyond the trailer of the movie to be like Satan's Alley's a teaser and the last duel is the full trailer. Like it would it would I swear to God, I just watched the whole entire trailer on mute. I swear to God, it would be the... You would... if You just wouldn't know. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> you just wouldn't know. Uh, so that's... <laughs> but I'm Satan's watching, Alley I'm, went off. I'm watching it right now. I'm, I'm following along <laughs> as you talk about it. And I'm like, yeah. I'm nodding. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> just continue to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god Satan's Alley classic absolute classic it's almost over it's almost over then we'll be <laughs> <laughs> shit is it not like it is right it's not Five just me Five Academy Award winner Kirk <laughs> Lazarus MTV Movie Award Best Kiss winner Tobey Maguire <laughs> uh, oh, it's fucking oh. incredible whew I'm glad I made that connection live on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, my cheeks hurt now, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Oh, too much smiling. I gotta stop it. Serious, serious business. Serious, this is, this is a serious business <laughs> podcast. All right, you know, there's no jokes on here. Oh, uh, the last duel, October fifteenth, right before something else a week later that we'll talk about. <sighs> but first, we oh. talk about something. <laughs> oh, serious business. Serious business. Remember. Uh, first, we talk about something that will be released by the time this episode uh, gets released, but uh, it's the first time we've had footage of it and we've had the opportunity to talk about it. And it's a it's a full trailer for the upcoming anime film coming to Netflix called The Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf, uh, a.k.a. This is just Castlevania. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Same thought exactly. This is just Castlevania with, with fucking... It's Castlevania, but with, Witcher. With the Witcher, right. I mean, Am I all in? Yeah, 110%. Yes, of course, I'm all in. Of course, because it's Castlevania, but it's the Witcher. Of course I'm yeah. all in. Why would I not yeah. be? Those are good things. I'm saying good things right now. It even sounds like the same... It's the, vo- same, it's the same voice actor that played oh, Hector look at in, there. in Castlevania. And it's just like, they're really just leaning into it. They're just like, yeah, we're just doing Castlevania because we really liked it too. So we're just going to do the same thing. But it's a film. Cool. It is a film. It's I'm not all a about- series, so... This is a film. It's a film. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's an oh. anime film, which is kind of interesting. It feels like it could be a series, but I'll take a film too. You know, you don't have to wait. Well, I guess it was Netflix. You wouldn't have had to wait week to week anyway. But you know, I'll take I'll take whatever. Yeah, that's totally cool. I'm all about it. Yeah, uh, I think it looks great. Um, you know, I don't know if they'll try to thematically tie this in with future seasons. This is the, of the person that trained Geralt White, right? Correct. I think it's Vesemir. Uh, so it's young Vesemir. Vesemir. You know, name. he's he's guy's got a cool haircut or whatever and he's he's a, he's probably an old looking guy and I think he's I think they cast someone to play him in season 2 of The Witcher. So I guess it should I guess it'll connect by virtue of the fact that it's following a character that we'll then see the older version of later this year and I think December when season 2 starts of The Witcher, but yeah, this is a cool kind of gap filling thing. The animation style alone also is very Castlevania esque, and then yeah, like, totally. monsters and creatures and everything, and having fucking Theo James also voice act is just like okay, like you know, again, they're literally just doing it. I'm like, fine, fine, honestly, all um, about it. It's really, cool. I think it, it do, and it does look cool, you know, and and the way that Castlevania, as we talked about, is just full of cool shit. This also looks to be filled with cool shit, and it seems to be fun and uh you know just kind of scratching the same type of itch and that's that's totally okay in my opinion yeah yeah i'm all about it i just want i watch an anime i watch an animated film i just want cool shit that's all i want no it's an animated film i just want cool stuff you know what i mean i like compelling stories i can I can oh, maybe stories. squint. Uh, I can squint with the storytelling as long as it's cool shit. I can squint, like you know. I can accept subpar story as long as it's really cool. You know, 
but this is uh, potentially uh, good storytelling, like Castlevania was. Castlevania had it had peaks and lulls, I think, but overall it had good storytelling. Yeah, and it had yeah. cool shit. Mm-hmm. The it, Witcher it had, it had both. It, the rich, the Witcher is right full of cool shit and right full of good storytelling. So I'm I'm all about it. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So August 23rd is technically the release date, which is again in the future for us. Probably not for those listening. Um, so I don't think we'll I don't think we'll probably do an episode on this just because there's probably some other stuff that we'll um, want to want to cover. But um, certainly something that we'll talk about. I think in some fashion. Uh, you know, on a future episode. Um, so, so yeah, Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf coming to Netflix uh, in just, uh, just a few days from now. Uh, two more trailers. Another animated project first. Um, maybe one that uh, doesn't look as good. Maybe. I don't know. I'll, I'll wait to hear your thoughts on it, perhaps. But uh, Blade Runner Black Lotus. This is an uh, animated series uh, from Adult Swim and Crunchyroll. Uh, obviously, within the Blade Runner franchise, the, the world of Blade Runner, 13 episode series. Um, not really what I expected. I think when they announced that they were doing an anime series based on Blade Runner, I think my, my expectations were somewhere higher than I think what I saw from this. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's up your alley. Maybe it's up your seat. So alley. I don't know. You, you tell me. The art style is definitely different than what I thought the art style would be. This looks yeah. like almost like PlayStation Two gra- like not Correct. maybe PlayStation Two. Maybe, maybe that's maybe a little three. Low. It's like it's like between two. It's like it's it's pre rendered PS Two. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, like it, Final it's, Fantasy Seven, but the pre rendered stuff. Obviously not like. Oh, well, I don't know. I guess that was PS One, but I don't know. It, it it's it's the art style is a little different i will say that it's it's about 20 years old it's it's a little dated that's what it looks like like. 3d lo-fi animated style and it's kind of i assume it must be cheaper to do it that way like you know it's like we can just use this 20 year old program and it's fine like i I don't know it's a little it looks very weird just just from the the visuals of it yes uh especially for like if you go for hand-drawn things like you can get away with a whole lot um, at the same time, if you go with computer animated, like the bar is set so incredibly high with with what is available, right? And, um, and like, and, and I think even like with TV shows, like you know, they have like the How to Train Your Dragon show, and it's like obviously it's not going to have the level of sand animation that we're seeing in the yeah, How to Train Your Dragon movies, films, yeah. But like, it's still pretty good overall. Like, it's it's obviously lower, but it's still good. This is not that. This is this looks still this is definitely not that. Twenty years behind the curve, still. So, with that being said, um, I do think that, I don't know, the IP is very cool. Um, I'd be interested to know what the story arc of this show is. I would even be, I, if it's something I can readily watch, like, I don't think I have a Crunchyroll subscription anymore, so I don't know if I, mm-hmm. I don't know if mm-hmm. I can just hop on board with that. Um... So I don't know how I would watch it. I wouldn't go out and pay extra money to watch this. But I if it is fair. something if it's something that I'm already paying for, even with the level of fidelity of the animation, I think I might watch it just based off of like the IP, like based off of what it could be. Um I don't know. It 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 was definitely a lo-fi trailer to say the least. I mean, it didn't it did not it did not win any marks on me based off of animation. Uh but it's Blade Runner and Blade Runner so far to me has put out nothing but good stuff. The 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 first movie, the second movie and even the the animated things that came out before twenty twenty forty one or whatever it is, uh, mm-hmm. both of those, or not both of those, but those were cool too. So the IP has got no reason for me to not want to hop in on it. I can overlook bad animation or lo-fi animation or whatever that art style is. Maybe it's not lo-fi. Maybe that's just the art style that you were gunning for, which I don't know why, but if that's what you wanted to go for, maybe the story carries it. I don't know. Uh, but I don't, I wouldn't go out and pick up another subscription for it, but I would watch it if it's part of what I'm, if, if I'm already paying for it. So that's my, that's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, I think I, 
in large part agree with you. Not anything certainly I'd be going out of my way for to pay for to watch it. Uh, and yes, anything that we've seen with the Blade Runner franchise has delivered. And that includes the, the anime stuff that we got before 2049. And I think that's kind of why my expectations weren't met is because, oh, I thought this would be the, I thought this would be in the same style as like those prequel anime things that we got, which were really cool. Uh, or I think there was just one that was animated particularly, but it was really cool. Uh, and then I guess I just expected something along those lines that would, you know, be within the Blade Runner universe, which is which is great. And there's a lot that could be done with that. But this doesn't feel doesn't even feel Blade Runner y to begin with, in my you know, oh, it my opinion. It feels more like uh it feels more like that Scarlet Johan Ghost in the Shell. It feels it more felt, ghost in the felt, shell. Felt more ghost in the shell, it felt more Alita Battle Angel. And someone in the YouTube comments made a joke and it's just like they saw they saw the words Blade Runner and they're like, all right, give her a sword and make her run around a lot. And it's just like, honestly, yeah. <laughs> honestly, yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't feel like the the vibes aren't there. It's I don't know. It's it, uh, I hope it's a bad trailer. I hope it's a bad trailer is maybe what I'll kind of say to punctuate everything. But I can't say I'm excited. And I and, and once upon a time, I definitely would have been really, really in for a very cool, um, you know, Blade Runner animated series like there again there's there's just a ton of room to work in uh with with something with with that sort of concept but this doesn't seem to be hitting the mark for whatever reason um and I think I I, I think it maybe starts with the animation style but I think it goes beyond that it's like well I don't really like how it looks but also like I just also don't really like how it looks you know what I mean beyond just yeah it looks bad it's like oh no well it doesn't look interesting either I don't know it's a little disappointing. A little disappointing overall, but uh, nonetheless, coming this fall, we'll get Blade Runner, uh, Black, Black Lotus, Lotus um, and maybe maybe it'll be a surprise. Maybe maybe it will, but um, if nothing else, we'll have something else to look forward to this fall because it's time to talk about our last trailer for, for the day, and uh, it's a big one. It's a big one. I'll give you the honors, my good sir. Why don't you, why don't you, why don't you tee this up for the listeners? We have... An official trailer for Dune. Dune. And not just, oh, I mean, man. this this is a whopper of a trailer. Three minutes and 27 seconds. WP is just like, you want some Dune footage? Here you go. Uh, and uh, They serve it up on a fucking platter. They do. Ooh, buddy. And it's very good. How many times have you seen this trailer? Would you guess to me? I countless times. <laughs> uh, this trailer, this trailer. Had, myself. This trailer came out. Um, I don't know. We're recording late, and so, but I feel like this rec- this this trailer's been out for probably at least a month, right? Uh, close to. I think it came out. Yeah, kind of a m- little past mid July, so it's been around for a while. So you've I've had at least I've, ample I've, time I've, to watch it. I've watched this trailer probably two or three times at least a week. I thought you were going to say um, every day, and I was just like, "Hey, I mean, fair enough, man." Like, you know, no, no, not no, no, not every day, <laughs> but just every, um, every every other day, your you know, roughly just kind of pops in your head. And you're like, "I just want to watch the Dune trailer." You know, is, I'd rather watch the movie itself, but I got to wait till October twenty second. I think Gross, this is probably going to be the most incredible movie. I don't know. I it's going to be epic. So, you to, know? so gonna, to put it Denny to put it in the, clearly going for it, our boy Denny. Is uh is just you know he's she's shooting for the stars with this sort of thing and 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 I appreciate that. Uh, so I'm I've got an hour left in the audiobook of Dune. I've been listening to Dune. You've been you've been burning through it then. I've so been you're burning almost through done it. with it. Okay. Uh, I listen to it before I go to bed. I listen to it on my way to work. I listen on my way to home. Um, my I whole life it. is just Dune. Right now, <laughs> everything outside of what's the best way to put it if i have time alone it's dune Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i mean that's that's just the way it is and uh there's a couple of quotes in here from from the trailer on the youtube on the youtube page uh that a made me laugh uh but but just encapsulized the trailer for me um this uh benny jesseret uh, two weeks ago, put I must not hype. Hype is the mind killer. Hype is the life, the little death that brings total oblivion. 
which is like a total play on words uh, from the actual quote from the book. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and this other person one day ago wrote, uh, and it was a quote from uh, Denny. Denny. And they said, uh, I'm writing part two now, and I feel like I'm eight years old again. He says, flashing a childlike grin. That's very uncommon for me. It's the first time I've experienced I've experienced it. I'm watching one of my one of my movies and I, I god damn it my eyes. I can't I ah my fucking eyes. <laughs> I, I have a moment of deep gratitude of of deep joy and I say thank you for having allowed me to bring that to to the screen. I don't know how other people feel about it but me Denny when I was eight years old, thank you. Um, which is a quote from the director of the movie writing the second part after he's watched the first part of the movie. Like the, cause mm-hmm. it's supposed to be a two part thing. Right, right, um, right. Also Hans Zimmer said, this is like the score of a lifetime. Like this is like his dream film to write a score for. Um, and, and just from the trailer music from this trailer alone, I've said it a couple times to you. I'd love to see a live recording of the people making this, the score. Um, I think that the cast, uh, just from what I've, I haven't, I haven't read the book. Uh, I've been listening to the book, but just from my experience with listening to the book, I think the, uh, I think that the cast is absolutely fucking incredible. Like, I think they're incredible in their own right as like, awesome actors and actresses but as far as being like placed well for the film and placed well for the roles i think that i think it's absolutely on point absolutely incredible and i could not be like i yeah i'm hyped for star wars shit i'm hump i'm hyped for star wars shit just based on it being star wars right i'm hyped for a lot of things uh, but this, I'm hyped for the cast. I'm hyped for the story. I'm hyped for the cinematography. I'm hyped for the director. I'm hyped for the fucking the 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 uh, for Hans Zimmer. I'm hyped for all of it. I think it. If you're gonna take anything that I've ever said as tour de force, I think that this is going to be the fucking force. Like I think it's, it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. The tourist of forces is all I can say. Like I can't Future quote for manager tourist of forces, <laughs> the tourist of forces. I think it's, I think it's going to be absolutely incredible. Um, if you've never gone and to see a movie in IMAX, I'm going to venture out and say that this is probably a movie that you go and see in proper IMAX, see it in the biggest, possible format possible and i think that this movie is going to totally just ah man we haven't been able to go see a good movie and like we've we've gone to the movie theaters here and there but i think this movie is going to light a fire under cinemas and i think it's gonna i just think it's gonna be a it's just going to be a movie for a generation. Like, I think it's going to be like the next Lord of the Rings. It's going to be the next big fucking thing. And I could not be more excited for it. I am so incredibly excited for it. I, yeah. 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 That's all I got on this. This trailer looks absolutely incredible. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Just looks like a good trailer. <laughs> it's pretty good. I don't know, man. We can move on. <laughs> We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. See what, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. happens soon. No, I think I think we know that this is something special. Obviously, it's it's one of probably our favorite directors. I think our favorite collective directors, uh, Denny Villeneuve, who 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 has put out great film after great film for for years now, uh, and it's him taking on a beloved sci-fi project that I haven't read. Andrew has basically mostly read at this point, obviously out of inspiration from, from the film coming along shortly. But um, 
it just feels right. And I do absolutely hope that it does kind of reach that, that level of uh, fan fervor um, that, 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 that we seem to be feeling. And honestly, the cast alone seems to be really exciting people. Like, you know, it's got a great cast all around, but it's a cast that seems to excite different generations of, of, of audiences. And my hope is that this does do really well. I hope that it, that is, I, I, I minimally expect it's going to be a good film. I don't, you know, I, I think, I think, I think Denny's going to deliver. I think we're going to get a great product and probably a good adaptation. Can't speak to that personally, but I, I know I think he's going to nail it. And my hope is that it just does kind of, you know, hit that sort of, um, and I think it's going to not to cut you off, that, but I, I, th- I think yeah, it's going to be timely too. With all the stuff going on in Afghanistan, there's a lot of, there's mm. a lot of, um, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just there's a lot of um, God, what's the best? I don't know how to put it. I don't know how to put it into words. There's a lot of um, Middle Eastern culture. There's a lot of Middle Eastern influences that are in the novel. Um, okay. Okay. That I think yeah. that are that I think that are inherently going to be present in the film because they're so rooted in the just in the like the backbone of what what the narrative is um i think it's going to be incredibly timely as well with everything that's going on in the world right now um yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah anyways that's the, that's the other thing i, I need well, to yeah, say yeah i mean yeah i mean i and so so if you know assuming that to be true i just hope that it does kind of I hope that I hope that it hits. I hope that people come out in droves to see this, and obviously, I, I want people to be safe. And obviously, you can watch it on HBO Max if you so choose. As Denny puts it, it's driving a speedboat and a bathtub. Um, his words, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's about, yeah, that's the way I feel about the trailer. <laughs> so you know, I'll, I'll I'll be seeing it in IMAX myself because <laughs> it's it's Dune. And we've been Good words, about Denny. This for for so long. That you know is that what he would is that actually what he said? <laughs> That's literally what he said. You know, he's talking about. I think, look, you know, obviously people rewatch films and you buy films on 4K, Blu-ray, whatever you ha- you know, fine. But I think when you see a film for the first time, you want that experience to be pristine. You want it to be immaculate. You want it to be perfect. You want and it like to be IMAX the way it was like the best intended. you can ask for. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, and and I think James to tie it into this episode. I think James Gunn has kind of been on the same boat of just being like. I'm not really a fan of the whole let's drop it on HBO Max the same day. And like, obviously it's great for audiences. It's great for people that don't want to go to theaters. It's great for people that don't feel safe going into theaters. It's, you know, it, whatever. Like it's a, it's a cool model. It's, it's, it, it obviously has worked and maybe for some hasn't worked as well, but you know, for the directors, the people that make these films, like they think these things are going to be seen in the biggest possible thing. And then you have people watching it on their phones. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's gotta be a little deflating. If you're, if you're James Gunn, if you're Denny Veneuve, you know, just thinking like, oh, I made, I, you know, we poured millions upon millions of dollars into this product so that we could have people come out and have this shared experience, you know, just being awed by the visuals of everything. And, oh, uh, you know, they're, they're watching it on their phone. It's just like, oh, okay, well, you know, it's not really what I was going for, you know, but you know, it is what it is the circumstances are really kind of hectic. And, and I think, I think Denny in his quote was just like, you know, like I think he said the pandemic is the enemy of cinema, which is fair, you know, obviously like having shared experiences is a lot more difficult than it was a couple of years ago, you know? Uh, so it is what it is. You, you really have to kind of roll the punches at a certain, at a certain point, but I get it, you know? And, and that's why for something like Dune and really, you know, even more than just Dune, like there's a lot of films for me, like, I want to see him in Dolby if I can. I, I want to, see, you know, I saw the Green Knight in theaters, even though it's coming to VOD like tomorrow as of recording this. So by the time this goes up, it'll be out on video on demand. Like I didn't want to do that. Like I have a pretty decent setup at home. It's not a big deal, but like there's certain things you want to have that sort of uh, yeah. theater environment for. And then there's things that you want to have the most ridiculous setup possible. You want to watch it in IMAX or something like that. And that's, that's, that's your, that's your dune right there, you know? So I totally get it. Uh, anyway, you know, it looks great. It looks phenomenal. The cast is amazing. The score we've uh, certainly, anytime Anna has been on, we've definitely shit on Hans Zimmer a lot. And I think it's because Hans Zimmer likes to phone his shit in a lot. I don't think he's phoning it in here, which is, which is very exciting because I think that he definitely has the talent, 
uh, to deliver. He's a very scores. talented he's done individual. It, he's done it time and time again. I think he's just been kind of lazy as of late. Uh, certainly, whenever he got the call for Wonder Woman 1984, he's just just like, mm, I'm going to keep working on Dune, but um, here's <laughs> here's some tracks that I can recycle from my past catalog, and we'll call it a day. And I actually take that one track from Sunshine because it's really cool, but like you know, use it as a temp track. Actually, it's good. Just keep it. Whatever, that's fine, man. Um, I do think he's going to deliver here. He's doing like three soundtracks worth of shit for this. Like, I don't know. Like dude is clearly like all in on this. And like, I think that's cool. Great that he has passion for this. I wish that he wouldn't take projects that he doesn't have passion for because there are clearly plenty, but you know, you gotta, you gotta put food on the table or whatever too. So I guess I get that aspect of it, but um, I don't know. All, all of it really seems to be gelling in such a really, really big way. And so I hope that, you know, I hope that more than just the movie being great, it it turns into kind of the revelation or, you know, a kind of a shared experience that we've seen with like a lot of Marvel movies. Um, and some others like Avatar was, you know, obviously a huge, huge cultural kind of touchstone for people too. So I hope it ends up being something closer to that. I don't think it's going to make billions upon billions of dollars and break records and stuff like that. And obviously it really can't because of the release format and the timing. But like, I still hope that, under the circumstances, it, it, it you know it blows everyone's expectations away and, and and really really delivers. So I'm hopeful. October 22nd is when we can look forward to Dune. Um, it's gonna be really bad if this movie turns out to be shit. Yeah, it's gonna, that'll be that'll be, that'll be an easy shooting for the most disappointing <laughs> film of the year uh, when we talk about it early next year. So now nah, I, I I believe in Denny. You know, you talk about believing in Kevin Feige and Ryan Coogler. Denny's Denny's in that same crop of of people where it's just like. Until they let us down, it's kind of hard to really not expect great things, right? You know, so that's kind of where I'm at with this one. So anyway, Dune, October 22nd. That's that's the news on to the Suicide Squad. Um, yeah. The Suicide Squad. Uh, what do we have to say about it? It came out in theaters earlier this month, and it is also available for a limited time on HBO Max. It, um, if you want to talk some box office breakdown, if you're wah, up for wah, that sort of thing. Wah, 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 wah. Overall, I think um, kind of disappointing, um, admittedly, which... The first Suicide Squad, if you want to call it the first one, they're really not that related. It's a loose sequel. Um, The first one did really well. Um, It was a terrible, terrible, terrible film. And I've talked about it with a few people uh, since seeing this. And and I I do legitimately think that the first Suicide Squad is one of the worst films I've seen. It's really fucking bad. Really bad. I know, like, you know, you see bad films and, and whatnot, but honestly, it was just a borderline unwatchable really i mean to be honest and like barely a film and kind of how it was put together just just an absolute disaster but uh anyway um it did really well um i think because you know it was kind of a new thing at the time the dc universe was popping off with batman v superman and the like and everyone was having a great time <laughs> yeah, everybody um, <laughs> and then everything came crashing down and then here you know and then now you have the suicide squad where they're uh, DC hands James Gunn a blank check and says, just do whatever you want. And James Gunn is like, you're going to regret this, but okay. Um, but uh, the Suicide Squad did not do as well at its, as, as its predecessor. Now, obviously you're talking a release amidst a pandemic and as things are getting worse, unfortunately, uh, and certainly in certain parts of the country um, and amidst a simultaneous release with HBO Max. And that is, in fact, how we watched it. We did not watch this in the theaters. We watched it in Andrew's home theater uh, with his with his double 5,000-pound uh, subwoofers, uh, you know, providing a lot of bass. Uh, I told to, 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 to rock your skull. I told the neighbor, I said, I had some friends over. And they said the subwoofers were giving him a headache, and it brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> <laughs> I think it wasn't for me. It wasn't so much physical pain that it was inducing, but it was it, it was the bass was so heavy that it was making some of the dialogue inaudible. It was Christopher Nolan esque at times, and I'm just like, <laughs> not really here for this, especially when you have control over it. Tenants mixing is something you can't really control, but here you can, you know, you can, you can still get some effective bass. And, and I turned it down. I turned it down. It was, you know, 
That's what I'm saying. Even with the reduced levels, the bass was still incredibly impressive, but I could also hear the dialogue. So it was like, a, it was a real great uh, best of both worlds situation. But I happen to be a fan um, of the heavy bass. <laughs> I, 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 I know. I know. <laughs> Trust me. I know. Uh, certain things I think it works better for. Here, here, I mean, it was fine most of the time. There's like a helicopter sequence. Was I think that's where everyone was just like, no, no, no. We got it. We're going to go turn right it now. down. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> basically <laughs> anyways um so anyways yeah suicide squad box office not as good as its predecessor um like i said multitude of factors that can certainly explain some of that and it's rated r uh very much rated r um but yeah overall i think it's just been kind of disappointing uh it's opening weekend i think it opened at number one uh i think 26 million but then it collapsed with a 70 percent plus drop in its second weekend uh, which is not good. Uh, so $42 million overall domestic through, I think, three weeks. Um, worldwide, it's at $118 million. Yikes. I just think compared to expectations and, and, and such, it's got to be regarded as a disappointment overall. But, you know, it's there's a lot of things working against it. So kind of sucks, you know. <laughs> you know, I think someone pointed out, like, I think that it, hasn't made as much as the first one did and it's opening weekend or something like that still, which is kind of crazy. Um, and it's just, it just really sucks because that, that film is just such a gargantuan piece of shit. It really honestly hurts my feelings that <laughs> this isn't doing at least even like, I, I get it. There's going to be a drop off because of the, the factors that, you know, that I've talked about, but like this is, this is probably still beyond that. But anyway, it is what it is. It's a disappointing box office result, I'm sure, for all involved. But, you know, maybe maybe the critical reception and such is something to make up for it because it's done really well. It's like one of the best-reviewed DC uh, films, uh, certainly in recent memory, but I think generally speaking, too. Uh, and maybe that's maybe that's for a good reason. We'll talk about that in a second, but let me, let me set it up. Uh, Suicide Squad, the Suicide Squad, I stand corrected. I'm so sorry. There is a difference. Again, uh, there is a difference. Uh, it was written and directed by James Gunn, uh, who people will probably recognize for his work on the Guardians of the Galaxy films. Uh, it has a very large and uh, pretty talented ensemble cast uh, featuring the likes of Margot Robbie, Idris uh, Elba, John Cena <laughs> is back. He's back. John Cena. Uh, Joel Kinnaman, Sylvester Stallone, Viola Davis, David Dusmalchin, Daniela Melchior, uh, Michael Rooker, Jai Courtney, Peter Capaldi, Alice Braga, and Pete Davidson. Uh, that's right. SNL's Pete Davidson is here. You like him. You love him. He's here. <laughs> don't, 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 don't look for him to have a big role. Um, Supervillains Harley Quinn, Bloodsport, Peacemaker, and a collection of nutty convicts at Bell Rev Prison join the super secret, super shady Task Force X as they are dropped off at the remote enemy infused island of Corto Maltese. Uh, and that is your setup for the Suicide Squad. So what do you think? You think the reviews got it right? Did you did you have a good time with the Suicide Squad? Does it make up for the uh piece of shit film that we got back in 2016? Um They got a lot of make it up to do. It? Uh, I will say that I, I <laughs> yeah, you can say that again. Yeah, uh, I did enjoy this movie. I think the comedy was on point. I think it was a very humorous film. Uh, I think that it had a um, God. I want to say one of the best villains. I think that I've seen in uh the Probably DC the best in DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The best DC cinematic universe. Which is funny because of who the villain is. Um, yeah, I think I think it's been s- s- in some trailers, but we can save. I think the the full talk for spoilers. Yeah, it's just it's very interesting that you can have such a resonance with a with a bad guy, and we've gone so long with such terrible DC fucking villains that this is the best one that you could get. And this one's really I mean I I think all things like even if the even if the bar was set higher I think this would be a compelling villain. Um and I don't know it just speaks volumes about how shitty the movies have been. Uh which yeah, it's a shame. Um but I think that I think that your your core ensemble of cast was uh was very good. I I really think that um 
you know, naturally when you when you when you say you got Margaret Robbie and and Idris Elba and Joel Kinnaman and Sylvester Stallone and uh, you got all these you got all these fucking awesome actors. And one of your high points, and, and then everybody and naturally your eyeballs go to John Cena. Well, how does John Cena compare to all these other people? John Cena fucking rocked it. John Cena rocked it. I thoroughly enjoyed John Cena in this fucking we're gonna, movie. We're going to continue our sidebar on John Cena's acting yeah. specifically from the F9 episode. Yeah. He was significantly better here, I think. Maybe <laughs> just a better fit for the role, you know, just very ridiculous and over the top. Whereas yes. the other one's like, I don't know, everyone, I don't know. I'll agree I, with you there. Whatever, whatever it was, he, he, he fit this role like a glove and, and, and just delivered it. Probably, probably also just delivered a better performance, generally speaking, too, you know? And I, I think he's working with, uh, you know, not to the detriment of the actors in F9 or anything else, but it might be like fucking golf or tennis where, like, when you're playing a better opponent, when you're playing with better people, maybe you be, you maybe you might play better. You know what I mean? It's a little bit more acting going on here. And the other one is just Vin Diesel, Vin Dieseling about. And, you <laughs> yeah. know, everyone's just kind of doing their own thing. So it's just John Cena's left to his own devices. Here, you know, he's acting opposite Idris, who's who's obviously an amazing actor. And, and really anyone else in here, even the lesser known people, you know, are... are they're putting in work, you know. So you know he's he's, he's got to step up, otherwise he's he's going to look. And like he the steps odd man. up. He does step up. I think there's uh there's lots of there's a lot to be said about John Cena's presence in this movie. Um, I think with a different person in his role, I think you might have less of a movie. Um, and so I think I hats off to John Cena. You know what I mean? He's uh he's playing with an ensemble cast, and I think he really steps up. Um, so I, like I said, hats off to him. Um, hats off to the writing of this movie written and directed by James Gunn. It is definitely 110% a James Gunn movie. Uh, and, and it shines because of it. I mean, I, I, I like, uh, uh, from, from what I've seen, I know he's done some other stuff that I haven't seen, uh, some of his earlier work. Um, but Dude knows how to make a multi, like a, like a, he knows how to take a number of different characters and meld them into one cohesive thing, uh, which is something that a lot of people struggle with. Uh, but James Gunn excels at it and he can make a, I think he makes a extraordinary movie out of a bunch of leads, which is, um, which is, I, apparently it's a very hard thing to do. I, I, I couldn't do it. Um, but he does it, and he does it well, and he does it better than a lot of other people. And I think that uh, he is the perfect person to bring in for this kind of movie. Um, I think that the um, it was a longer movie. I think I think it felt longer, but it didn't it didn't um, it didn't lull. Which is we watched it we watched it late at night, and I. I am one to fall asleep. I fall asleep sometimes talking about movies. I fall asleep. Sometimes I fall asleep watching movies. Um, and I fully expected, I fully expected me to fall asleep during this movie. I did not fall asleep. <laughs> I did too. For the record, I definitely was just like, as soon as he put it on, I'm like, oh, this man's going to be done after nope. 20, 30 minutes. I was there. I was there for was the up. whole thing. He was up the whole time. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, there might be a number of different reasons for me staying up. I don't know, but uh, at the, this was just a—it was a compelling film. It was—it was—it was a lot. It was a lot better than I thought it would be. I will say that uh, the bar—the bar was set low, and it far exceeded expectations. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So that's that's uh, that's that's my that's my take on. Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. Yes, again, very big difference. Honestly, though, actually a very big difference. <laughs> yeah, huge uh, as difference. It turned out, a uh, world of a difference between a worst film uh, from DC and maybe a best film. I don't know. I mean, I still love Shazam, too, and it's almost weird comparing them, but uh, for my money, The Suicide Squad was great. I had an, had an excellent time with it. 
Um, I think my expectations were probably a little bit higher overall because I'm a fan of James Gunn's works. And it, to me, felt like, you know, this is a movie that was born out of him getting canned from Guardians Volume 3. And so DC swoops in and picks him up and says, hey, you know, we've seen what you know you do. We like what you do. Makes your thing. And DC's at the point where they're desperate for anything. So they'll just let him do whatever he wants. And it feels like, you know, James Gunn to this point has had two runs of taking a band of misfits and, and making them lovable characters because, you know, James Gunn's the guy that made you fall in love with a raccoon in a tree. You know what I mean? So like him getting his hands on D F tiered comic book villains from, from the DC universe, like feels like, Oh, that could be really fun. That could be, you know, interesting. It's the suicide squad. Uh, and that means that these people are going to die in horrific ways. And that is true to a certain extent as we'll talk in spoilers. Um, you know, to me, my expectations were like, okay, this feels like a really actually good fit for James Gunn's sensibilities. Like I'm excited to see what he does with it. And I think the trailers that came out, I, I, I enjoyed pretty well overall. Um, I thought they looked good and I was hopeful that this would kind of be what I hoped it would be, which is James Gunn just really, really leaning into it and understanding what the suicide squad is meant to be and how they're supposed to operate, which was like a fundamental failing of that other suicide squad film was just like, the whole thing was like, Oh yeah, we, we've con, con, constructed this team to fight off Superman level threats in leading the charge is Harley Quinn with a bat. And I'm like, I don't think Come she's going to do much. <laughs> like, I don't think she, I don't think she's going to, I don't think she's going to, I don't think she's going to do much to be honest. Uh, and whereas here, you know, the plot is very much like, okay, you know, we've got a situation, we've got to drop, you know, the, the suicide squad in, you know, if, if they, if they die, if they get caught, whatever, you know, it's not a big deal. We'll figure it out. You know, it's not like we're trying to save the world with these guys. It just felt like James Gunn was a natural fit to understand what these people are supposed to be. You know, these are, these are laughable characters. They're the polka dot mans and, uh, rat catchers and king sharks and you know um, whoever else you know other no name characters end up in this film. DTC you know, like like, or again, what, what the fuck was his name? T- T- TDK. 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 <laughs> TDK. Exactly. Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion. Good stuff. You know. It, you know. It's like yeah. It's it's another band of misfits kind of thing, but like almost taken to the next level. Like uh, and I and I think James Gunn actually talked about in the interview it's like you know like the guardians like you know like at their core they're all kind of like good people you know what i mean like obviously like they kind of put up a brash exterior or you know something like that but like you know gamora is this hardened assassin but like the whole thing is like oh there's good in her and she rebels against thanos's kind of training you know as 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 his daughter and becomes good and turns good for the guardians and the guardians are all kind of good we're like these guys are all just assholes or they're murderous villains or some combination of you know, all of the above. And that's, that's more fun because it's just everyone trying to out villain each other, outdo each other and out cool each other, you know, you know, it's just fun. It's just fun. Like this is what the suicide squad should be is, you know, all these lunatics basically just being let loose and like, you know, you have, you know, Hey, obviously they got the chip in the head to kind of keep them on mission and, you know, and maybe have some, some field generals out there to keep them in line. You've got a John Cena to keep them in line. You know what I mean? But, uh, you could Joel Kinnaman to keep them in line. Uh, but you know, like, uh, I don't know. It felt like all the elements were there to make this something really special. And I think ultimately, I think it, I think it really did kind of live up to probably even beyond what my expectations were um, because I hoped for good and what I got was just incredibly entertaining. You know, I'm not going to say that every joke lands, you know, it's not always funny, but when it is, it's very funny. It's consistently funny. And it lands Um, in places that you don't expect it to land too. Like the humor, the humor is just, I don't know. The humor (laughs) is just fucking great. Right. It's good. I, I think, I think, I think just generally, I think I vibe with James Gunn's general style of humor. I think it occasionally, you know, uh, goes into dick jokes here and there one, one too many times, but for the most part, like it works really well. Um, and the, and the cast kind of delivers it all to perfection. I, you know, I felt a good real sense of camaraderie between all of these guys and, and, you know, most of the team are newcomers. Uh, you know, there's a few returning players from 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 that first film, from, you know, Margot Robbie, Joel Kenneman, Jai Courtney are all kind of back. And, you know, they're here, but 
for the most part, I think a lot of the, 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 the dynamics that we see are basically exclusively new characters or new relationships between, you know, different characters that we hadn't seen together before. So it really is James Gunn kind of just really doing his own thing. Like he's like, I'm not going to totally overwrite that other film, but I'm basically going to ignore it as much as humanly possible. <laughs> and I he think does. that was a good approach, you know? Um, so uh yeah you know it's 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 unbelievably violent gory um uh there's more nudity i think it probably in any other dc film that i've ever seen i would guess uh was there nudity but, you know, in this like movie was there nudity in this movie uh, it's, there's, there's someone hanging dong at the one of the like the war camps i think at one point and then there's a strip club sequence at one point as well so oh shit i don't know you know so my bar is set low <laughs> i mean it wasn't like wasn't like crazy or anything like that but again for dc standards it's just like oh my god they can do this in dc film okay. um, yeah you know uh, i don't know I, I i just i had a great time with it um it was just a very, very entertaining film from start to finish. You know, it really starts with a, a bang, um, the introduction, leading into kind of the main set pieces of the film. It's good. And honestly, stylistically, I really liked it too. You know, it's got these kind of creative like title cards throughout and flashback sequences. And just the way, honestly, that it's edited uh, was kind of what surprised me the most, I think, in a way, was just how how creative it was and how it all kind of gelled in like a really seamless uh effective way you know it, it didn't feel like it really ever missed a beat where it's just like all right you know we've got these group of characters on this side of the island and but eight minutes earlier here's these other characters doing their other thing on this and it's like uh well i don't really want to watch this i didn't really feel that like i was like oh i'm interested in every aspect of this i'm interested to see how it all kind of builds and coalesces and then you know when everything kind of comes together it's kind of you know it's glorious you know what i mean just seeing every like little piece kind of snap into the puzzle um I really, really enjoyed it, you know, and then it makes for this big bombastic third act, uh, which just goes into totally ridiculous wild territory with its villain and, and the resolution. And I, and I loved how, I loved how unafraid it was to just push into the ridiculous and embrace it. And also just get into weirdness and like, like there's some horror aspects at times you know, it's still obviously very funny at times, and like a lot of it's like really dark humor, like people dying and um, it's, it's pretty sadistic, it, you know, pretty, fucked up kind of ways. But <laughs> I just, you know, I feel bad. Like I don't know how I should feel identifying with that humor, but it <laughs> it hits sometimes. You know, you, you know, maybe it's not for you, maybe, but maybe it's for us. You know, all that I don't know, all the. <sighs> I think I I really personally feel like everything that was I think that everything that was intended to be humor hit me as humor. And a lot of times I have a hard time identifying like I, I I don't have a hard time identifying what's humor. It just doesn't make me laugh. And I'm a pretty like light-hearted like I I I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty go giddy when it comes to humor. You know what I mean? Like I'm pretty, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know how to verbalize what I'm trying to say. Uh, but when it comes to dark humor, <laughs> I think, I think it's pretty great. I like all of it, I think. Uh, and, and there's a lot of dark humor to this. Uh, and, Definitely. and all of it, all of it landed very well with me. Uh, I thought it was a very funny movie and, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm 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 right there with you. You know, it's it's a uh, it's it's a very specific style of James Gunn humor, and one I think that really hasn't been found in the Guardians films in a way. I think the Guardians films kind of have the same heart that this film carries, but I think they've almost been kind of um, this is this is a little bit darker. Not necessarily censored, but they're a little bit more um, cleaned up. I think you know for a mass audiences where I think early James Gunn was very much this style of thing where it's just like very out there and, you know, not afraid to push boundaries and, um, you know, be, you know, a little rough around the edges. This is very much that, you know, but it still does have, you know, again, I think it does have that kind of same heart. I think, you know, that the guardians films had where by the ending, it's like, okay, 
I'm entertained because it's funny and it's ridiculous and like, oh my God, that guy's head just got blown off or whatever, you know? And like, I just, you know, you know, whatever random bout of violence that you see depicted in gruesome detail is always, it's, it's also there. But at the core, it's like, I actually kind of care about these losers, you know, in the same way that, you know, the Guardians were a bunch of losers. These guys are a bunch of, you know, low rate, uh, low rent villains, just, you know, the lamest of the lame. Uh, oh, this guy throws polka dots. But I'm like, oh, man, I kind of care about polka dot guy. You know, like he's pretty cool. And uh, this 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 lady's got rats. But I kind of, you know, I, I the, the rats are cool. And like, oh, that rat's kind of cute, isn't he? You know, it's like, oh, it's, oh, this is weird. What are you doing to me, James Gunn? Is kind of how it feels. But it's really well done um, on the whole. Um, really impressive stuff from from James Gunn. And I, and I appreciate, again, I, th- I think I've said as much, but I appreciate that James Gunn, leveraged getting canned from guardians volume three into making this film and then just getting rehired so we can still make guardians volume three. I think it's just excellent stuff overall. Um, so, and and, you know, there's something, there's something to be said that makes sympathetic characters out of people that should not be sympathetic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's good filmmaking. Like that's, 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 that makes a compelling story. Right. And, and and I think it's, I think maybe to kind of what you were saying earlier, like it's really hard to pull off too. Yeah. You know, like, like you have to have a very deft touch to be able to make characters that you're not automatically going to care about, like feel like, Oh man, I, I do care about this person. Like, you know, you go watch and you know, you're, you're going to go watch a Batman film and you're going to care about Batman. But like, are you going to care about commissioner Gordon? Are you going to care about, Alfred, are you going to care about, you know, like all are you these gonna care about the Joker? characters? Right. Here, it's like, it's, there's no, there's no Batman in here. It's all, it's all Alfreds. It's all, it's all Gordons. It's all Jokers. And even Joker is almost a bar, you know, like too high in a way. Like, it's like, oh, are you going to care about the Chechen? You know, the Dark Knight guy who's like, you know, <laughs> my dogs are hungry. You know, are you going to care about that guy? But there's 40 of them. You know what I mean? Like, are you going to care about them? And like, Look, you're not going to care about all of them here either, but there's like four or five, and I'm just like, I'm ready to die for them. Yeah. I'm ready to die for these people, you know? And, and, and um, yeah, my hat's off to James Gunn, obviously. Um, and the hat's off to, to the cast, you know, Margot Robbie, obviously, no stranger to playing Harley Quinn, but I think she's very good here. <laughs> um, but the newcomers here, I think, particularly uh, Idris Elba, newcomer to the DC Universe, fantastic here. John Cena did, did a good job, man. He crushed it much better than F9. Joel Kenneman redeeming himself. You know, basically playing a totally different version of Flash. Katana, much, I got you. Much your... more enjoyable here. <laughs> yeah, we are a far cry from her soul. Her, her sword traps the, the souls of the victims. You know, like <laughs> we we are we are we are streets ahead of that that shit right there. Um, Sly <laughs> Sylvester Stallone coming in and dropping in some some voice work for King Shark, just crushing. Listen, it. King Hun? Shark, Hun? <laughs> King <laughs> King Shark. Ah, fucking King Shark, dude. King Shark. We'll, we'll get into correct. it. Yeah, we'll That's get it. We'll get into it. But fucking King Shark, man. Excellent. Correct. You know, I didn't know that option. was Sylvester. That was Sylvester Stallone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Excellent. Mm-hmm. Very um, nice. Dust Melchin as Polka Dot Man. Daniel Excellent. Shore, who uh, someone which, I've never seen before. Uh, we'll, she was we're going to get Polka Dot Man in, uh, in, in Dune, by the way, just in case, That's true. In case you don't know this. That's true. Uh, very excited. Very talented actor. He seems to be. Uh, he seems to be popping up in everything this year. This guy. Yeah. Um, another. You know. Another. Another person who had a bit role in the Dark Knight as crazy guy in the back of that truck that Harvey Dent tries to kill. Um, this guy seems to be just. He just pops up everywhere. This guy. He does. This guy he does. might be. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but he might be actor of the year. This guy, uh, the 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 guy with the uh, what award did we give um, the direct? Uh, uh, the 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 who won the year? I think. It's yeah, just, who won the year? Yeah, yeah. This guy might be winning year, the fucking no year. The this year, guy but... just pops up fucking everywhere. But anyways, yeah, we'll see yeah, what no, happens. He's, he's crushing it. I mean, good stuff. Good stuff. So. Anyway, um, I think that more or less covers it for non-spoilers for me. Um, any other thoughts? You ready to go on to recommendation? We'll go on a recommendation. Recommendations. What do you What do you got? What do you What do you think about the Suicide Squad? How uh, would so you recommend the, recommendation, the Suicide uh, Squad? 
so I'm not going to recommend somebody like my dad watch this movie because he definitely will not like this movie. Uh, but I do think that um, if you enjoy dark humor, if you enjoy just over the top, it's just an over the top kind of movie. Um, but I think it's a well made over the top kind of movie. Um, I think it's worth watching. I to me, this movie is a um, uh, it's a yes movie. I think um, that's how I would describe it. I would say it's a yes movie. I don't think that it's going to make a cultural or significant impact if you're not predisposed to enjoy the things that this movie presents but if you are predisposed to them or if you enjoy a superhero movie or you just enjoy like a dark humor kind of movie i think this movie does offer things to you i think it's an enjoyable movie um and that's what i and i'm talking in a hushed tone uh but i don't need to talk in a hushed tone anyways oh, you're, you're good you're good <laughs> Uh, that's what I would say about this movie. I think it's a, uh, I think it's enjoyable. I think it's well made. I think it's well written. Um, I think that this movie has its particular audience that it's going to appeal to. Uh, with that being said, it's not a, it's not a, this is a, in the only thing that comes to mind right now, I'm sorry, and it's because I'm so hyped about it, is Dune. This is not a Dune movie. And I haven't seen Dune, so I don't know if Dune is a Dune movie, to be fair. But I think... But... This is not a movie that I think that is important for cultural reasons or filmmaking reasons or anything else other than pure enjoyment. And I think that this is a movie, if you're predisposed to enjoy it, I think I think you're going to have a good time with it. Uh, and I think it's well made. I think it's incredibly well written. And uh, with that with that being said, I think it's a yes movie. Then that's my that's my stance on su- the Suicide Squad. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go with very yes for myself. And I think that's like really coming from a enjoyment value, like, I had, I just had a ton of fun with it and I hoped that I would. And it kind of delivered on those expectations of, I want to have fun with this. I want to see James Gunn relishing in the opportunity to, to be very awful with these awful people. And, um, to be able to see that was just, just really fun. Um, overall, I, I think I agree with you, you know, and, and it, I'm not going to recommend this to certain people because certain people are not going to get the same level of enjoyment that I think that we got out of something like this. Um, because it's, it's, it's very violent. It's very over the top. It's, 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 um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very James Gunn is, is kind of how I would describe it. Um, you know, and, and I think you'd kind of have to have that sort of frame of reference when you walk in to understand, like, is this going to be a thing that I might like? And obviously, there are going to be people that haven't seen that. So I'd say, you know, give it a try. It's on HBO Max, especially if you don't want to venture into a theater, which is an understandable thing. Like, give it a go. See what you think. But um, I had a great time with it. So, um, you know, minor humor quibbles aside, I I felt great about it. It's 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 a, it's, a, it's a very yes for me. Um, like I said, just purely in terms of enjoyment level. So, yeah, very yes. I'm I'm, I'm saying it. Very yes is what I got. So. Um, Anyway, um, should we should we do some spoilers? Yeah, we can dive into the spoilers. All right, let's do it. Full spoilers for the Suicide Squad. Uh, so uh, should we do a should we do a, a running tally? Rest in peace to um, uh, to Colonel Rick Flag, to uh, Polka Dot Man, to Captain Boomerang, to the Thinker, to Black. Guard to TDK the detachable kid uh, to <laughs> the detachable uh, to, kid <laughs> <laughs> to Javelin Flulaborg Flulaborg's in this can't we can we can't forget about him <laughs> um, anyway lots of people died in this in glorious fashion uh, I would say and uh, and I loved every second of it especially the fact that like was it the opening credits were like panning over these horribly maimed bodies um, you know just people's Oh, Rooker, Michael Rooker got, he was, he was the one that got his head exploded in the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
he was the most hardened of all the fucking people. And then he tried to <laughs> run away and got, just fucking exploded. Oh, man. I had like shell shock watching like everything happen. And oh, man, that was glorious. Um, so I, 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 I mean, the fucking I weasel, the weasel, weasel. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> weasel, weasel, weasel drowns survived. on the beach. Weasel drowned, but then. Is MIA for the whole movie, only to find out that Weasel survived. Uh, and he does was, that fucking was, Ed Ed Nettie run across the beach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's correct. <laughs> and, and it tells me that I, I I run like that sometimes, which may be true. Maybe true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, I do think that uh, the boomerang dude, uh, his death was. I laughed. I laughed at myself with his death. I thought that was pretty yeah. good. And he and he didn't have like an over the top death. He just got like Mm-mm. he just kind of paled like like a lot of shards of something, right? Is a lot that... of shards of trees and shit from the helicopter crashing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you had that lady <laughs> that 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 one that one crazy. Uh, oh, she was like an she alien the one that or jumped something? on the helicopter. Yeah, and pulled her down, Mongal. Yeah, Mongal. Just yeah, fuck it. And I'm, I'm, that's it. Uh, that was interesting. Um, you had, had the detachable kid. This fucking oh my god, just so ridiculous! Just the arms <laughs> punching, just truly ridiculous. Stuff. <laughs> Shot his arms, and he was in so just, much pain. He's just, he's just writhing around on the ground, armless, like ah, you know, <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, oh. I wish we got that guy, you know, on a side note, I wish we got that guy in more movies. I I enjoy, I enjoy his performances. I think he's a good Mm -hmm. actor. Um, The the boomerang, the weasel. Yeah. uh, So we could talk about polka dot man, polka dot man uh, cared about fucking everybody. And he kept seeing his mom. His mom was like, it was horrifying. Yeah. I left every, every time his mom popped up. Uh, he was a deeply scarred character. Um, and they, they made a, they made a reoccurring joke of that. And I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, he saw his mom and everyone and he, he did not like his mom. Um, and, uh, yeah. Anyways, he got crushed by something. He got crushed. What did he get crushed by? It was something from Starro, which Star was a conversation we have yet to have, but, I don't know if it was Starro throwing some sort of object or throwing, you know, something. Something happened in the final. He, something landed on him. He got something crushed. landed. He just gets. Just, he just got crushed. Dead. Dead in a second. You know, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, he like ate uh, up I'm, I'm a superhero of... and then crushed. You know, he gets his moment of glory in the sun and then and then he's dead. And 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 true James Gunn fashion can't have too many nice things. So yeah, uh, that was that was. I tell you what, though, the one that that one that really took it for me was Shark. King Shark or whatever his name is. He was your favorite, would you say? Um or you just, you just were surprised. I was I was really I was really surprised. He, he's one of my favorites at least. I got thick up. I'm sorry. Um Yeah. King Shark, he was I think he might be one of the most sympathetic. Like there's one point he's where he a, he gets just he, a simple shark man. He's a simple shark band, and then he like thought he found friends in like the aquarium Aww. of that fucking thing. Yeah, and he gets he gets ate up by those fucking sucker fish things, and it was it was actually pretty fucking sad. Like it was it was it was, it was. <laughs> like well, oh, and, and there's there's one you know uh, like everyone's like in disguise and like these ridiculous civilian costumes and they go inside the bar and and he he wants to go in super like you, you can't go in you can't just, he's just, just a fucking just a shark. Giant shark so like everyone's having fun inside and then it cuts to him just like sitting on the bus looking all sad and i'm like oh yeah oh, it's really fucking shark. sad like they made the most sympathetic <laughs> character out of that shark and kudos to the writing team, kudos to everything involved in that, because they, they made the most ridiculous character the most sympathetic. Aside, yeah, aside from the fucking starfish character, which was, <laughs> was, was, was the, the villain of the fucking thing, and he was hugely sympathetic too. Uh, so the most ridiculous characters in this film were arguably the most sympathetic. Like the one that you would think would have the most like 
the one you most would the one you would most identify with, which would be Ildris Elba's character and him right. having a daughter and yeah, this you get and that. the father daughter stuff, right? Yeah. So like it would go from like him, which would be the most obvious character to have any sort of like I don't know, any sort of uh emotionality to to maybe the rat catcher. Mm-hmm. And her dad is uh, like the coolest person on the face of the earth, which we Ta- I mean, Ta- 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 Taika Waititi coming Ta- in. Taquita Waititi, Taquita, Taquita, little Taquita Waititi, little yeah. little Taquita Waititi. You know, uh, you know, goes down easy. Uh, um, it was great. It was. Uh, there's man. I honestly think we could pull this film apart and just talk about moments for 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 a long, long time. Um, yeah. I won't do that. I won't do that to torture people. But, you know, I, I, there are a, there's just a lot of nuances, I think, kind of baked into this film and, and like make the places these... you'd least expect to see them. Yeah. Like they take these characters that are like you 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 shouldn't be able to identify with or you shouldn't, you know, like they're just they're they're supposed to be bad people. Um, and. Like I said, the one they centered the whole film around, which is I just Elba, I feel like they they he's he's like the least of the most identifiable people. Um Rat Catcher two point or whatever her name is, or Rat Catcher Two or whatever. Um hugely identifiable, hugely sympathetic. And then you go to her and 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 um King Shark, and that was a huge relationship in and of itself and he was a hugely sympathetic character and then you go to the antagonist which is a giant fucking star f- or not antagonist I'm sorry uh, yeah antagonist I'm getting my words mixed up anyways he was um, yeah the, the fucking villain of the movie is a giant starfish that tramples all over the land all over the country. Says it's his. Starro the Conqueror. Yeah. But, lo and behold, he was just happy staring at the fucking stars. <laughs> staring at the stars. <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's, he, like, what, he's been, he's been stuck in this island uh, they country. They fucking captured him, yeah. Years, torture, experimented upon, and then, you know, he finally gets loose, and, you know, admittedly, he he doesn't he's immediately pissed. write to the stars, but he's pissed. You know, he you know, so he he goes full Godzilla on 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 the locals, and um, you know, in come the Suicide Squad, basically like, all right, I guess we'll take care of this. You know, um, but yeah, you know, he is kind of just a, a sympathetic giant starfish. Uh, you know, uh, you know, as as everyone is expecting a giant starfish to be super sympathetic. You know, that that totally makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. <laughs> Just ridiculous, but but really well done. And I, you know, what I will say is, I think the horror aspects of Star were really really well done. Um, you know, oh, like, like just the, like there's a guy that's like just like fully in half, just like suspended up, and you know the 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 the, the, the little starfish, you know, basically being yeah. like face huggers, like you know. And there's the one that gets removed, and it's just like, oh, their face is just like gone from the starfish thing being attached to their head, like horrifying stuff. But like effective horrifying stuff like you know like it's kind of a fun weird juxtaposition next to all the humor that's in this film it's just like oh no there's stuff in here that's just legitimately straight up like this could this could come out of any given horror film and then uh, you have the most you know, charismatic leader in like the, f- the 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 face of the earth the most charismatic guy he shows up in his speedo and he's like hey i got these birds in this atrium and and hey, you know, I, I feed you good food and I talk to you nice and this and that, but ah, fuck the kids and and this and that. And she, 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 she Harley Quinn shoots him. It's like the best iteration of Harley Quinn I've ever seen. Like it's it's so good. I think I think because my thing with Harley is too much of her kind of ends up being a bad thing. Like, I think that you have to have her in either small doses or like balanced with others. And like here, all the other characters are like really over the top and, and, you know, very ridiculous in their own right. And so Harley Quinn kind of fits right in, but I do think Harley Quinn can be too overbearing if you let her kind of marinate too much of the attention, which I think was partially 
present in Birds of Prey. You know, it wasn't a Birds of Prey film. It was a Harley film. And it's just like, uh, you know, it, I, I think I liked that film better than you. Uh, and, and, you know, based on recent conversations about it. But like, here I agree. She was good. You know, and a lot of it was like, even 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 though a lot of this film ultimately was like, Harley is captured. She's off, you know, rescuing herself. She's, you know, freeing herself. She has this whole side thing with this, uh, with this dictator guy who's taken over the country who looks exactly like a friend of mine from law school. And Anna pointed it out. And now I cannot unsee it. And it's horrifying. And I did not know this man had an acting career, but good on you. Good on you for, for, for holding back. I don't know where you found the time in law school to, to go down and film a, you know, film, film a film for old James Gunn. But, uh, I don't know. It was cool. Like, even though Harley was kind of off on her own for a lot of it, she was like really entertaining in all of those. And then like even more entertaining when she's bouncing off all these other ridiculous characters too. I agree. Like I, 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 Margot Robbie, I think has been always good, but again, I just think that Harley character for me can always be, she's often too much. And I didn't really feel that in this one, the way that I did with her other appearances in other films. So it was good. It was good. Um, I think that I think that might be it for spoiler. I mean, there's there's like you said, you can boil each situation down to each like kind of each kind of scene. Uh, but I mean, in in a whole, I think that I mean, if you were to boil it down to characters, mm -hmm. I think. Oh, I enjoy. Uh, we didn't we didn't talk at all about John Cena. Um. John Cena in that sequence where they take over that 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 encampment that turns out not yeah. to be uh, <laughs> oh man <laughs> turns out it's not just to him be... and Idris Elba uh, you know trying to outdo each other the most ridiculous creative ways to kill everyone and and indeed they do and it's like you know I I gotta say that it, I think there are hints to like what's going on because it's just like you know like this woman's over there just like cleaning shit or something like that and you know like like these aren't these aren't like people in military uniforms or anything like that. They do seem to be kind of guerrilla fighters, you know, but in, in the moment I was just like, yeah, they're going on a rescue mission. They're rescuing Rick flag. No big deal. These are bad guys. And then it's just like, Oh no, no, these were all the freedom fighters. You've just killed every one of the revolutionaries in this country. And I was just like that, that, that got me. That got me. It was, you know, a good creative fun twist and, and funny in that same dark depraved way that you kind of, you kind of get with a lot of this movie, but that was a particularly clever thing after a super fun creative set piece, you know, with these two trying to outdo each other. That was great. That was really, really great. Love that. And then he ends up shooting, he ends up shooting him through the smaller bullet, which mm -hmm. is just mm -hmm. completely right ridiculous yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, good stuff. Yeah. It was good stuff. I, it was good yeah, stuff. there was a lot of cool stuff in this movie. Um, that's all I got from, for spoilers, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I have a few other scattered thoughts and obviously feel free to respond as, uh, uh, as, as you please. But, um, uh, I think, so when I walked in, I expected there to be squad one and squad two, you know, because they're, you know, we'd seen a lot of the characters in the trailers and I'm like, Oh, they're definitely dead. They're going to, they're going to die. They're going to die. Um, so to see that first squad die in such horrible fashion, I, I really reveled in because I was expecting it and I enjoyed it. Um, what I didn't expect, and this is another thing, you know, just like the, the encampment thing being like a twist of just being like, oh, those are all the good guys you guys just killed. Like, oops, oops, my bad. You know, I think another good twist was like the fact that uh, Waller, who is like a total fucking uh, sociopath and just like, oh, I'll just send all these villains. They can die. Who cares? The fact that they sent these two teams simultaneously was a big, sh but that was, that was the surprise for me that I really, really enjoyed uh, was the fact that okay, we got this whole team that went out on the island and they just all got shredded. Yeah, it turns out they were just intended to be a distraction so this other really good team can come in and actually do the mission that we really accomplished. I thought that was just a very kind of clever thing of just being like, yeah, these guys really are just disposable for us. And again, leaning into the ideas of what the Suicide Squad should be, and I think in a big way that the 2016 film just completely, completely whiffed on. Um, it was just really great. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, I was sad to see Rick Flagg go. I actually liked him in this film, which was a far cry from, again, that other film. Um, 
you know, and, and I, they did the Mortal Kombat thing with the, like the, the heart, you know, you see the heart like getting stabbed and everything. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, if they're giving us x-ray vision, that's James Gunn's way of saying he's definitely dead. Um, that was, that was, that was, that was good. The thinker, Peter Capaldi was, was, was very funny, uh, very depraved, uh, much like other things in this film, but very, very good. Um, Starro, I think we talked a little bit about Starro. Starro was a great villain, totally ridiculous, totally over the top, but still horrifying. And like, how do you make a giant starfish horrifying? Lo and behold, you watch the Suicide Squad and you will absolutely understand how you do it. Um, that was great. That really was great. Um, um, I think, I think, um, I think overall, you know, I was surprised to see that there was so much heart. I know to go back to, I think what I was talking about in non-spoilers, I think that these characters were infused with so much heart and that really made the film take, I think the extra step, maybe for me from yes to very yes was making these characters, people that I cared about. Um, you know, um, I think, you know, you, you had the, obviously Harley, we've seen a lot of blood sport, pretty, you know, traditional father daughter type thing. You get the motivation there. Uh, Rick flag, they turned him into an actual character with a personality, which was nice. But yeah, I think the two kind of big misfits that I really, really loved were King shark, of course, because King shark was great. And Sly was, was awesome in the, in the role, but they made, you know, he, he was very sympathetic and, you know, you cared about him and ice. There was like three separate times where I thought they were going to kill him. And I was just like, Oh, I don't think I'm ready for this. I don't think I'm ready. And he was, he was a resilient bastard, which I appreciated, uh, <laughs> with, you know, the, the, that nice shark skin coming in handy. Um, but I think rat catcher too, kind of, kind of is the one that really kind of caught me off guard the most. Um, you know, they kind of make her uh, a, a sweeter character, especially relative to the, the rest of the ragtag band of murderers, you know, where she's just like, yeah, just, you know, communicate with rats. And that, that, that flashback with Taika, um, really, really nailed it for me. Um, you know, I, I forget the exact line and I'm going to butcher it, but you know, basically like, you know, if rats have purpose in life, then, you know, that must mean something else. You know, everything must have a purpose too. I just, I don't know. It all just kind of, it all just kind of clicks with me. Um, so I really, 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 really like that. Um, and then, um, um, yeah, beyond that, I think just, just all of the, the action beats and set pieces really just kind of, again, worked for me. Um, to the point where, you know, I was rooting for the squad to, to complete their mission. Uh, I was sad when, when John Cena slash peacemaker made his turn, uh, to, to, to be against some of the other squad. And, you know, uh, I, I, I expected that there would be some, some fallout from that. And Rick flag dying was, uh, you know, it was just, I, I felt, you know, I wanted, I wanted John Cena to be dead and I guess we thought he was dead and we'll get into post credits in, in a, in a, in a second, but yeah, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I cared about these people a lot more than I think I really expected to. So that was, that was kind of the fun of it. Um, you know, so, um, I don't know. That's probably it. That's probably it for me other than I guess the post credits, uh, weasel weasel makes it out alive. That's great. Weasel was horrifying and, uh, yeah, uh, did he did he eat children? Did he kill children? I can't remember. But anyway, definitely a creature that probably should not be let loose on a, you know, an island of Corto Maltese. But whatever, man. But the final post credits we get is the is that that peacemaker John Cena is back, and as you may recall, we're getting an HBO Max show with Peacemaker. So are you all in for that? What do you, what do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, I totally be all in on that. John Cena has okay. earned okay. his fucking television show. Especially with that character after, you know, I agree. I think, I think, you know, if, 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 uh, if the last duel can pull a movie away from costume or makeup design or whatever, I think, I think that, uh, I think Suicide Squad sufficiently excelled at costume and makeup design. Uh, the costumes that they wore and how they wore them in this movie, specifically to John Cena, 
was absolutely incredible. It was humor in and of itself. I mean, like he had like jean shorts, his chrome helmet, oh. and <laughs> the, the, his the, polo. The, the tidy whities at, at the one point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's so great. It's awesome. Uh, I appreciate that John Cena and like, I think he showed up to the premiere in full Peacemaker outfit. And I think he was on Colbert or one of those other, you know, late night ones in, in full costume. You know, he's, he's having fun with it. You know, I, I, I like that. I like that. He's That's having fun cool. With it, leaning yeah. into it. It's good stuff. I, I, he's I'm curious earned, about the HBO He's Max earned show. his six yeah. episode deal or eight episode yeah. deal or whatever yeah, it is. Definitely. He's earned it. I don't think give they, it to him. I mean, I'm expecting because of this scene that it's going to be after the events of this film. I honestly would have been fine with the prequel. I feel like you could have said at any point, and even if he died in here, you just have a full prequel series would have been fine. But yeah, I'm I'm curious to give it a go because James Gunn is also heavily involved in that. You know, I think that there's a way that a Peacemaker show could go off the rails really quickly and be like, uh, I don't really care about this. But James Gunn, I think, has that sort of touch that you need to make a character like Peacemaker still be ridiculous as he should be, but also work in terms of like, you know, watching it as an audience. So yeah, James Gunn's James Gunn's just, he's just a talented guy. He's, he really knows how to handle these ensemble pieces is what I'll say. I think, you know, and in, in, in a way that I think, I think a lot of less skilled filmmakers wouldn't really know how to do it. And, you know, he's, he's had some experience in the, in this, you know, in this realm. And I think it shows. I think it showed uh, with the Suicide Squad. So um, that might be it for me on the spoiler front. Uh, I don't know if I've sparked any other thoughts in you or if, uh, if you're no, that's to it. say that's that for the Suicide Squad. But uh, yeah, I think overall, I think we can recommend it. You know, check it out fun on HBO movie, Max man. while you can. Maybe see it in theaters if you're up for it. But uh, very fun movie. Very, very fun movie. So so yeah, that's the Suicide Squad. Um. It has been some time since we recorded last. Uh, so you've, have you been up to anything lately you want to talk about? I've been up to a great many things. A great many things. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, 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 tell me about it. Tell the listeners about it. What you, what All you right. To? So um, in no particular order. Because I, I typically forget what I did, uh, what I've done. Stream of consciousness. Yeah, that's it. So I, anyways, uh, while I think while you were on bathroom during the middle of this episode, I actually tried to dump everything I could remember I've done. <laughs> anyways, uh, okay. so okay. I, right. I, well, I watched and com- I watched and completed He Man, uh, the the Netflix special. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. How was it? It was okay at best. It okay. Um, it was okay. Uh, fair enough. It was. I would say that. If I'm going to compare it to anything, I would say it was Voltron at best. Um, I think you made comparisons to that, like when we were talking about it. So, like the tra- like the trailer stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it yeah. was it was, um, it got better as it went on. Okay. Um, That's good, but and, I would, and, I, and it is only part one of part two. So, like, there's going to be more episodes coming down the pipeline too. And I hope it's like a four episode deal, just like this was. To be completely honest with you. Uh, and then, you know, it would be totally okay if that's what it was. So I, I did I did watch and complete He Man. Um I did start What If. Uh we'll have a complete episode on that at some point in the future, so I don't I don't feel the need to to Definitely. linger on that. Probably a couple um, a, a good ways away because it just started. I think we got we got the second episode. That's today. right, and we're it's kind of bullshit the way they're re- they're releasing it. They, you know, it's one <laughs> episode at a time. That. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, I'm two episodes into that. Okay, um, I, I've seen the first one, but not the second. Uh, I've heard good things about the second, but yeah, we'll, we'll get it into it at some point. Mm-hmm, indeed. Um, I did watch. Uh, I did complete season two of the Hands Ma- Handmaid's Tale. Okay. Uh, there was a, um, so what I've been told is that there's one, season one is like the encapsulation, encapsulation, or however you want to say it, of the, of the, of the novel that was given to us, Mm -hmm. uh, and then season two is just depart from the novels, or the novel, or what have you. Um, there is a definite departure from that, you can tell, you can tell, uh, 
degradation in the quality of the the, the writing, I think. Uh, by the end of the season, it gets pretty compelling. Uh, so I'm I'm excited to see what season three has. Uh, I did watch Jungle Cruise. Hmm. Once upon a time, we would have covered it. I think probably will fall by the wayside at this point. But maybe you okay, can, you if can, we, you can if tell we, me is is it worth for me to watch it so that we can have a fuller conversation? Or I did think? not spend thirty dollars to watch Jungle Cruise. Or okay, okay. whatever the whatever the Disney Plus thing is to watch the Disney Cruise. I did not spend that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but what I will say is, it was. Uh, I would say that it is on par with a. Um. The most equivalent thing I can compare it to is, is a uh, fucking. What's it called? Um. Indiana Jones is too much praise. Uh, Goonies is too much praise. Um, Johnny Depp. What the fuck? What's it called? Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean? Yeah. It's like a Pirates of the Caribbean. See, episode one, or season, not season one, not episode one. The first Pirates the first of the Caribbean. Of yeah. It's on par with that. Like, you get your adventure, which is cool. You get... Uh, um, the 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 charismatic nature of of the rock or Dwayne the Rock Johnson and and uh, Emily Blunt is fantastic. I think that's great. I think they have a lot of excellent chemistry, and I think they one hundred and ten percent made the movie. Uh, and the cherry on top on that would be uh, Paul Giamatti. He's in it, uh, and 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 that he's I always am a the cherry. Rhino. Yeah. Always a cherry on top, that guy. I, uh-huh, I, uh-huh. he's in it, cherry on top. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it far more than I thought I was going to enjoy it. Um, run out in theaters and watch it. I don't know. Spend thirty dollars and watch it. Definitely hard no, unless you have like ten people in your house that want to watch it. But would you say it's worth an A list? You know, you already you already paid for the A list. Yeah, yeah. Spend a I would say, hours with it. yeah, yeah. I'd say you'd probably have fun with it if you went and watched it. Just hey, I want to go to the movie theaters and watch it this week or whatever. That's mm-hmm. that's totally fair. I, I right. would I would give it that. Um, I watched Luca. Uh, we probably at this point won't have an episode on Luca. What I will say on Luca is is Luca wasn't as good as I expected it to be. Um, Luca was good. Luca brought emotionality, which is to be expected, but it just wasn't up to the level of storytelling that I came to expect for that for that for that movie. Uh, so it felt it felt it, it fell kind of short of expectations. That doesn't mean it wasn't good because it was good, uh, and I did identify with it, and I did I did have a good time with it. It just wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Um, I did find uh, so as of right now, uh, Afghanistan is in a it's is 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 kind of a shit show uh, with everything that's going on. Uh, I yeah. think that yeah that can be said with with. No matter what part of the aisle you're on, I think you can say it's a shit show. Uh, I think it's fair to say that it would be a shit show regardless of however which way you wanted to pull out. It's it's almost it's naive to think that you would have anything but a shit show. Um, with that end, I would say that I tried to educate myself a little bit on what's going on. I watched an excellent documentary uh, from DW, which is a German, um, it's a German publication, and they they put out a lot of documentaries. Um, watched a documentary from DW called "Endless War." Uh, it's available on YouTube, and I don't know. I think it's like an hour and a half or some shit. I don't know, uh, but they started from the '60s and and went all the way through like current times. Uh, from the perspective of like four or five women uh, that that lived in Afghanistan and and they kind of like retell the story of 
like where they were, where they've been, and where they're at now. Um, brought tears to my eyes. I think it was an excellent documentary. Um, didn't do a lot of research outside of the documentary. Like I tried to, you know, like it's from a German publication, so you don't know like what's the perspective or this or that. Um, when it comes to stuff like this, I try to educate myself on all the, all the different ends on which the information can be spun. Um, but from the women telling the story and their stories that they told in that documentary, it felt very authentic. It was very well made and it brought tears to my eyes. And it's, uh, if you don't know like the ins and outs of the situation or where Afghanistan was was that or where it came from or what the situation is at all. I think it's a good place to start. Um, and it kind of opened my eyes to a whole lot of stuff going on in Afghanistan and like the history of Afghanistan and that sort of thing. So, uh, definitely recommend that for like current world events and that sort of thing. Um, I also started another documentary from DW because I was, I was pretty blown away with, uh, endless war. And that's uh, The New Silk Road, which talks about uh, China's influence on, on, uh, on Europe and the world and, and uh, um, The Silk Road, for those that don't know. Uh, it totally revolutionized, um, I think, the world in general. Uh, it's an ancient, ancient trade, trade route between China and Europe, and it... And it revolutionized like thought and and things that came from asia and into europe and it was a giant big deal it was a huge deal um anyways uh china is um china is in the midst of of revitalizing that that trade route um they're in the midst of changing their maritime trade and their 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 um their their trade on foot and how that plays into um how that plays on soft democracy and and democracy in general and that sort of thing and and how that's interacting with Europe in general and the world at whole and how they're um how they're leveraging their presence in in democracy and that sort of thing uh it was a very uh it's a I'm in the middle of this documentary, the the New Silk Road. It's a poop, it's a two part thing, um, but it's 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 very interesting, um, and that kind of ties into Afghanistan because Afghanistan lies in the middle of the trade route for the New Silk Road and that sort of thing. So, um, I find it advantageous to ask the question of. Like we were in Afghanistan for twenty years, and then we pulled out. With the reason, what's the reason why? The reason why doesn't get answered in in public discussion. It doesn't get answered by the White House. It doesn't get answered by those people uh, because there's advantageous reasons why you don't answer those questions in in public forum like that. Um, but if you want to dwell on the questions on why there's things happening in the world, I think it's advantageous to educate yourself on the history and what what's happening you know in regions elsewhere and so that's why i kind of took the dive on the new silk road and in afghanistan and this and that because we have discussions about that at work and i like to try to educate myself on those things um also uh, we've gone a long time without recording, so I'm just kind of like <laughs> rambling on. I told you I dumped all my shit out at once, so that's what I'm doing. You see, you remember it this time. It, it's a rarity, so I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I have gone through 23 hours of Dune. Uh, I have one hour left of of the Dune audiobook. One measly hour. One the measly me- hour, uh, and I am excited to see how Dune, the first book, ends. Uh, there's a there's a number of different Dune books, and just from my wiki dive, it gets pretty crazy and wild. And I don't know if I have a whole lot of interest in diving into that, to be completely honest. Um, it might just end with the first Dune book, unless the second, unless this movie like 
invigorates me to watch the second part or to listen to a second book. Um, what I will say is that um, Sarah went and got a chair for the for the bedroom, and I have a little light and I have a chair. And I might start reading. I might start reading after I finish this audio book. I might start reading. Proper reading book in front of you, that sort of thing. Yeah, with a light, uh, with a beer, and just like, hey, listen, it's the end of the day. I, I want to read for an hour, or I want to read for 45 minutes, or a chapter, or whatever. Um, I would like to be able to train myself to start to read. Uh, I do know how to read. I'm not, I'm not illiterate. <laughs> Uh, but I would like to get into the practice of it, it's a big ordeal for me to start to read again. You have the, uh, the, the certain sort of patience for it. It's it's tough. It really is, honestly. Yeah, you you know you you can listen to everything, you can watch everything. Uh, it's a different thing to interpret that medium uh, in your head completely. And if you're not accustomed to it, it's often fatiguing. Like you can you can lull yourself to sleep reading a book especially when you're out of practice about it. And and I have an appreciation for it. I haven't done a lot of it. Uh, to be completely honest, I've, I've only read a couple of books in earnest that I was super interested about. I mean, of course, you read textbooks and shit, but like books that I actually sought out to read, I've only read a couple of them, and they were, they were a Song of Ice and Fire books. Um, and I was engulfed by them. Um, and they make your brain, when you read, it It makes your brain work in a different kind of way. And I would like to be able to do that. So Sarah went out and got a, a reading chair for the bedroom. Uh, there's a little there's a little nightstand there where I can put a beer and there's a light and there's a candle. And, and I could really get into it. And I would like to be able to train myself to do it. So I'm going to make a conscious effort. I have uh, a Song of Ice and Fire somewhere in this man cave. Uh, and I think that will be the first book that I will try to undertake, and we'll see how I do. Um, but I'm going to make a conscious effort to try to do it once I finish Dune. Um, Are you going back to Song of Ice and Fire? Not a song as I... Did I say... Is that what I said? Yeah. Way not of Kings? A song, a way of Kings. Yes, that's okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it's, it's a hearty endeavor. So, you know, you might be biting off more than you can chew. You can always start smaller, too. Or start if you're ready small. To just Listen, dive I'll into, read... It's a full fantasy, then go for it. I'll read it. I'll read a chapter a night, you know. Yeah, yeah you, you you gradually kind of get know, engulfed by make it. Your way through it. Yeah, and it's it's it'll be something that'll be done by the end of the day, you know. So if I can read, if I read for twenty minutes a night, I get I get a quarter of a way through a chapter or whatever, and then I hang it up and I go to bed, and then tomorrow I revisit it, you know, and then I can slowly t- start to tackle more. Um, that's true. Yeah. Once and, and and that's the kind of book too, especially like when it picks up, it picks up in a big way and you're going to not want to put it down for, for, for good chunks of time. So, but I'd like to read books that can better myself. I'd like to read books that educate me a little bit more you know what I mean? You can, you can get so much from a book. Um, and, and it's such a leg up on like social media, like the stuff that is just so available you know what i mean like it's easy to raise an eyebrow to it or or talk down about it but that's just what's available and that's what you're exposed to on the daily basis you have to make a conscious effort to do anything other than that you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and i would like to make a conscious effort to do something other than the thing that's widely available so um i'm gonna try to do it we're gonna see we're gonna see what happens um i did uh God damn, I've been up to a lot. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, it's usually me rambling on and on, man. So, uh, Sarah brought home a textbook, and and um, God, I can't remember his name, and I feel bad about it too because it it brought me to tears. But there's this guy that uh, he was from Africa, and they made a movie about it called "The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind." And hmm. do you know about okay. this? I've heard of it, but yeah, uh, I, I kind of vaguely know about it, but enough yeah. to recognize it, but not enough to give you any more information. So you're 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 still on your own at this point. William Kamawamba. Sarah must have Sarah heard Sarah coming in from the side <laughs> with the save. I don't know if the mic picked up that up, but she definitely just came in and fed Andy yeah. some information. So William Kamawamba. 
uh he was a uh he was a young child in africa and he um and there was a drought in his country or his city or what have you and he he his family couldn't afford to take him to school anymore they were farmers and um he as a result of that he he had to sneak into school to get the information that he sought anyways he ended up making a windmill that generated electricity and it was like a it was a thing that he made from scrap metal and a bicycle and and like a it was just scrap metal pretty much and it generated electricity and uh they made a thing about it and he he gained he gained worldwide recognition from it and he went to a couple of ted talks and um i watched the first ted talk that that he did and then i watched a ted talk 10 years later and he had graduated from a school in the u.s um he had afforded to his to his 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 sisters to go to school and he had to sneak into school to learn what he learned in order to make what he made um but it was just like a worldwide phenomenon that you know just a uh just a little bit of information and a little bit of drive could revolutionize the most dire of straits, right? And like it was just it was um just inspiring. And um anyway, so I read that and then I watched the TED Talks that he put out, you know, the first year and then and then ten years later and then after the movie and that sort of thing and um it was just a guy that he 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 made the most hopeful thing out of his situation and he was driven to change the the world around him and it was uh it was just an inspiring tale of somebody that wanted to make change and he made it and it was awesome and then it makes you think like yeah the internet the internet kind of tears the world to shit because people are shitty but you take somebody like the boy who harnessed the wind and it completely changes the face of the community around them. You know what I mean? And it, I don't know, just kind of, it makes you think. And yeah, so uh, I watched that. That was a good thing. I also went to the eye doctors. My eye has been getting more lazy. I already had a lazy eye. People used to tell me I could watch multiple security cameras at once. <laughs> uh, they used to call me a chameleon. Uh, I have a, I have a wonky eye and, uh, and anyway, so I went to the eye doctor because there was something in my eye that I, I could see now that I couldn't see before. Come to find out the thing that I was seeing wasn't a cataract. I've had cataracts before. It wasn't a cataract this time. It was just the, uh, the corneal scar that it, it's, it's more evident now than it has been before. And, uh, anyways, I've got glaucoma in my right eye, uh, and it's, I think it's pretty much crushed my optic nerve because I can't see a whole lot from it. My my vision in my right eye has gotten um, gradually worse uh, to the point now where I can't I couldn't hardly see anything. So I was like, okay, well I guess it's probably time I can't see anything. So probably should go to the eye doctor. Uh, anyway, so I went to the eye doctor. I have glaucoma in my right eye. They gave me a bunch of eye drops and shit, and they're going to be giving me. Um, eyeglasses now i see 2020 in my left eye i can you squint Coke bottle on one side i i well we don't we're not worried about the right side i can't see shit out of the right we're, side well, well well okay okay i see i can't see anything you can put whatever you want to put on my right side i it's pretty much gone it's not gonna it's not gonna help it i see no okay. it's okay. it's pretty much gone um i mean i can see a little bit it's worth me taking the eye drops um so salvage what, I, what you can but yeah exactly so what the doctor said was is um i can detect light from that eye uh and as i've taken my dro- eye drops i can i can gradually s- start to see color from a start- certain quadrant of my eye like if if you were to split your entire vision into like quarters i can see out of one quarter of my eye and i can start to see color out of the top right corner of my eye but that's about it other than that that's it i can't see hardly anything but he said that your hormones and stuff are driven on being able to detect daylight and and no light and so that's something um so it's reason for me to continue my drops even though i don't have insurance and stuff uh so i'm doing that i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing 
to maintain that one eye. Uh, but anyways, they put me in front of the eye doctor, the, 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 the fucking, let's check your eye vision to see your, what you can see. I can see 2020 without any corrective lenses. They put the eyeglass thing in front of me. Okay, I swear to God, it was like I went from seeing like a, a four by three, like old school tube TV to HD TV, like 4K TV, like it was nuts. The clarity on just a couple of the little slides, like I was like, holy shit, I can see that real good now. I don't have to squint. Anyway, so I go from seeing 2020 to 2015, which is pretty good. But. The lady also told me the lowest it goes is 26 by six and a half, which is like superhuman vision. And I, I Superman. It's literally, yeah. literally Superman going I could, in doing I could, his vision I could, test. Yeah, I couldn't see that at all. So it kind of made me feel like shit. But I can see 2015 with corrective vision, and I can see it clear as a fucking TV, clear as a bell. Uh, so anyways, I went, uh, I ordered some, some eyeglasses from Zelly or whatever it is. Zenny or Zelly or I don't know some cheap thing online so we'll see we'll see how those glasses turn out but uh so I'm getting eyeglasses um I also booked my honeymoon uh I'm we cruising we will be go cruising to Alaska which is cool Ooh. I will be spending it looks like roughly 600 bucks to go on a helicopter ride I very much want to go on a helicopter ride on top of a glacier. That sounds incredibly badass. I'm 110% all about that. So uh, we're going to add to the honeymoon thing and, and add a helicopter ride to it. But we're going to a helicopter ride. We're going to Anchorage and uh, a couple of other places in Alaska. Uh, flying nice. to uh, San Fran, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cool. Um, but I booked that last night. Um, we're also looking for people to hire to work at the car lot. You're putting out a, you're putting out a, 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 a call for a call for help. Yes. Call for help. <laughs> uh, if you would be interested in working at a car dealership, we can use you. If you're a mechanic, if you are a competent person on a computer, we can use you. If you want to show up to work, <laughs> we can use you. If you're not fucking stupid, we could just <laughs> we could just use you. Uh, so uh, that's uh, that's all the stuff I've been up to. I've been up to a lot apparently because I've been rambling on for a while. But yeah, it's all good. It's all good. That's it. What have you been up to, dude? Um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna spread a few things out. I'll, I'll talk about some a, a couple things that will tie in together maybe on the on the next episode or two. But um, I'll talk about what I teed up earlier, and that's going down to Florida. Um. So flew down to Florida first time flying in a while, which was a hectic experience. Um, uh, flight got canceled on the way down, had to end up rebooking, thought I wasn't going to make that f- you know, flight and thought I was going to have to schedule something for the following day. And it was just a lot of heartache and a lot of headache. Uh, but we got it sorted out and ended up uh, down in Florida just a few hours past when we were supposed to and still waiting on my check from Frontier to reimburse me for <laughs> having to buy new tickets out of pocket. So we'll see if that comes in, in the next week or so. We'll see. Um, but I uh, made it down to Florida. It was good. Um, and it was Anna's first time with me down to Florida. She had been to Florida previously, but it was her first time down. So she had met my parents previously, but with my brothers ended up uh, in Florida as well. So it was her first time meeting my brothers uh, which was very cool. She ended up meeting uh, some some of my extended family. She met an aunt and an uncle, um, and uh, you know we were just there to to spend some family time together. And uh, um, it was good. You know, it was nice to just be there. Um, Graham was there for a bit. Um, my my nephew, um, and so that was that was good fun. Obviously, I went down to Andrews for a couple days of, of the week that I was there. I think a Friday to a Sunday, uh, partied it up for a bit, um, which was uh, which was which was different for us, you know, coming off of twenty twenty. Obviously, uh, they Welcome do things to Florida. a little bit differently down in Florida. Uh, that's for sure. But it was fun. It was good fun. Uh, and then you know. Love Saturday was recovery day. Two Saturday days. was a recovery day and a suicide squad and a little bit of rock band and you know we had, we had some good brunch, some 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 good avocado toast on Sunday. So 
it was fun. Um, we went up to Gainesville for, for part of a day and went to a couple of breweries and I took Anna around the UF campus and stuff just to kind of show off the, the old, uh, the old spots back in the day. So, um, it was nice to see you, my family. It was nice to see you. And I see Sarah, um, met up with, uh, uh, James and Caitlin. James has been a previous guest on this, uh, podcast. He hosts the Ink to Film podcast as well. Um, so yeah, we, we were able to, to see some, some, some familiar faces and it was great. It was great to, to be down there and it was really nice to be down there with Anna. Uh, cause the last time I had went, I had driven down on my own. Um, and you know, very different circumstances for sure. So, uh, had a good time. Um, uh, did a couple things while I was down there. So we did, we also watched Luca while we were down in Florida. It was the first time watching it. Uh, it's Graham's latest obsession, uh, is to watch Luca. He's seen it, uh, many times. I think we asked Dalton how many times he had seen it. And he said, I think a dozen, something like that. I think is what he might've said. Uh, so, so Luca's a big hit in, 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 in that, in that house with, uh, uh, with his three-year-old son, so we watched it. It was like the fifth time he watched it while we were there, but it was the first time we actually sat down and watched it ourselves. And I, I really liked it. I, I, I was a big fan of it. Um, did you, did, uh, did, did somebody cut onions? Um, I don't know that I necessarily had tears at any point, but I just really liked the, the animation style and the, and the colors and just the setting of it was, I just, I found it like really fun and I found that the humor worked. Uh, there's a couple times that, I haven't done it in a couple of days, so I'll bust it out and see if Anna laughs. But, you know, there's a few times I'm like, Santa Mazzarella, you know, just, just, just little <laughs> stuff like that. That was just, you know, it's just funny. Uh, Santo Gorgonzola, you know. Um. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was good. It, it was good. You know, it was it heartfelt. Was good. You know, it was, it was good. It was, you know, I don't know if it was necessarily soul. They cut the or, onions you know, on you know, me. Not, but they cut the onions on me. I cried. It was good. It was really good. You know, Pixar, I think, has really done great work of late i think there was a little bit of a lull like you know for pixar standards like still good stuff probably but like not amazing and this is they really hit their stride recently to be fair if you were gonna say this or soul i would say soul you know what i mean it's it's not it's not soul it's still good yeah i thought it was still really good you know I, i i had a good time with it and you know, uh, I kind of saw where I guess a lot of it was going, and I think Soul was a little bit more unexpected in terms of its plot. You know, um, but yeah, really enjoyable and and just really charming and fun and cute um, and heartfelt. You know, it just kind of felt like really like really genuine, and um, you know, that's pretty pretty common at Pixar to be fair. But yeah, I, I really really enjoyed it, and it was fun watching with Graham. You know, who's enraptured in it. Um, we had, we had been playing in the pool and I played the role of the pool monster. And I think that I was in, I hadn't seen Luca at the time, but I think I was basically just playing Luca in the pool, uh, with him. Uh, so that was kind of fun. Um, so, so that was good. That was good. Um, but other than that, um, we didn't watch a whole lot. Obviously we watched the suicide squad while we were there with you. Um, Anna just put on a Disney channel original movie while we were like unpacking and stuff called the color of friendship, uh, which I'd never seen before and never heard of. Um, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, it's basically like a student exchange program. There's a, someone from South Africa that comes to uh, a black family in America and, you know, the black family is expecting, oh, this person's from Africa. It's going to be another black person. And lo and behold, it's a white person in South Africa. And this is set in a time during apartheid. So it's like a super racist white, white person. So it's like, oh, you know, how do you navigate that situation? So it's, uh, it's about the color of friendship. It's about overcoming, um, you know, your racial uh, stereotypes and, and obviously the, the racial dynamics in your home country and, and the inherent racism that was was ever present there. But it was pretty good, you know, kind of like kind of like a pretty unflinching thing for like a Disney Channel movie, I would say, um, you know, like really didn't hold back in terms of looking at like um, race and race relations. So um, she had seen it before. She she was a big Disney Channel as a kid kind of person, <laughs> me, not so much I've seen a few things here and there, you know, Lizzie McGuire and, you know, some of the other classics perhaps, but not really, not really, um, anything that I had heard about, but it was good. And it also had Carl Lumbly who played, um, who played, uh, Isaiah Bradley in the Falcon of the Winter Soldier. Okay. Uh, so yeah. it was like a, like a really early role for him, I think, but he was great. So yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Um, 
surprisingly enough. Uh, we just watched it in chunks and it was just like, okay, this is background noise to me, but like, well, it's pretty solid, pretty solid and worthy of a mention apparently on this podcast. So, so, you know, um, the last thing that I'll talk about, uh, something I watched on my birthday, actually, Enrique and Isleen, um came over for the night and it was really fun. Uh, we watched Jaws, which was, uh, Enrique, they had, both, they had gotten me the 4K Blu-ray of it, um, I think last year, in fact, and I hadn't watched it. Um, I'd seen Jaws before, but not in many years, but it was the first time that I watched it in 4K. So we all watched it uh, at uh, Anna and I uh, at our apartment. Um, and it was just super fun. Um Great, great film. Uh, holds up to this day. Uh, looks great in 4K. Um, Spielberg, Spielberg, man. He, he, he knows he, what the fuck he's doing, didn't he? He he knows what he's doing, that's for sure. Um, and old Brucey, Brucey the shark. Bruce the shark was uh, honestly held up for most of the film. Like, Dawn, a couple um, moments Dawn, where it's like a little, you know, like, oh, okay, it's not a real shark, but yeah. How about that and, score, uh, man? John Williams, man, yeah. It was good. It was great. Wah-bum. It was really fun. Wabam. It just the coolest thing to play any sort of music for these kind of people. Hans Zimmer, John Williams. Could you imagine like being a part of that? <sighs> yeah, I oh, mean, I stand behind it. I want to see that lady singing the Dune shit. That's what I want to <laughs> see. <laughs> uh, the in studio recording. Of, yes, uh, I will get that. goosebumps. Yeah, yeah for days watching that woman sing dune anyways i'm I'm sorry go back to dune i'm so excited about dune i could not be more hyped about fucking we'll we'll, we'll, we'll probably talk about dune once or twice more before i uh, was hyped about green knight we'll talk about green knight too we will we will we will talk about it very soon but uh anyway jaws is great um anna and i uh, Target had like a sale and I had the red card. We got a Jaws board game that like for like eight bucks or something like that. We haven't played it yet, but like that's our next thing to do. It's very interesting. The first, there's two phases of the board game. The first phase is on the beach and then the second phase is on the Orca. You know, you're out on the, on the open sea. <laughs> sounds so, cool. so it sounds pretty cool. So we're excited to, 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 get, to give it a go. But we, by the time we finished the movie, we didn't have, it, everyone was too tired, so it, it wasn't meant to be, but it's a next time kind of project to, to play it, two to four players. So um, anyway, that's uh, that's that's some of what I've been up to, but that's enough for this episode that we can go ahead and wrap it up, I think, for there. And uh, I'll, 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 I'll talk about some other things on the next episode. So I'll go ahead and say thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, please spread the word. If you want to support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash watch for your repeat, you can get early access to all of our regular episodes. Um, and our website is watch of your repeat.com. We're on Twitter at WRR pod. You can like us on Facebook as well. If you just search for watch of your repeat, we have a page there. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, uh, please send those our way to watch review repeat at gmail.com. Uh, I, as I'm, saying this, I remember there is something for the listener's corner, but because we're kind of running long and, and late, um, I unfortunately will hold that for the next episode. So stay tuned for a, a future edition of the listener's corner. Cause we do have some stuff there, but I don't want to, I don't want to keep us, uh, for too, too much longer. So next time, next time I'm, I'm, I'm teasing everyone and <laughs> teeing it up so that people can come back, um, putting some, some bait at the end of the fishing rod, um, trying to, trying to keep some, some fish and, water metaphors going but uh yeah 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 uh intro and outro track mechanolith by kevin mcleod licensed under the creative commons by attribution 3.0 license and i think our next episode will in fact be the green knight it feels right before it i saw it literally today as a recording i at one point was just like well i've seen it maybe i'll call an audible and ask andrew if he wants to record on it tonight and then i watched the film and i'm like i have so many questions i need some time i need to think about it a little and bit and i'm more. gonna watch it a second time tomorrow yeah, and it's coming out to, to, to VOD starting tomorrow. So it's like, you know, this feels like, yeah, well, we'll just wait on this one. You know, the Suicide Squad, you know, we, we saw it once. We, you know, we, we got it. You know what I mean? Green Knight is a multi-layered film that requires, I think, some 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 thought, some analysis. So <laughs> so we'll get there. We'll get there in the next episode, in fact. So, so yeah, look forward to some coverage of The Green Knight. Thanks for hanging out with us for the night uh, or the day or whenever it is that you're listening to us. It's the night for us. Uh, and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode. Why don't you take us out, Andrew? Take care now. Bye-bye then. Laters on the Minjay. 